Patrick takes the snap, drops back, lobs it back right corner. Decker! He's got it! Touchdown! Eric Decker scores! And the Jets have won it in overtime! This is the Jet Take with Ben Blessington and Kyle Fahey. Okay. <laughs> Kyle, we're going to restart that. What the heck was that? Takes the snap, drops back, lobs it back right corner. Decker! He's got it! Touchdown! Eric Decker scores! And the Jets have won it in overtime! <laughs> This is the Jet Take with Ben Blessington and Kyle Fahey. Welcome back to another installment of the Jet Take. I'm one of your hosts, Ben Blessington. Uh, And just another reminder, Tom Brady is still a cheater, and Tony Romo will be the Jets quarterback in 2017. Kyle, how you doing? Is that that enough fire to open up the episode for you? Well, you didn't mention Revis, but uh, oh, we'll we'll get. Don't worry. Oh we'll yeah, get to we'll my get it. Around. We'll get it to Revis. Uh, we'll we'll dig into twenty four in a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I guess that was good. Yeah, you know, I, I try. It was um, all right. It was all right. It was more like you're kind of like the caveman right there, okay, first okay. discovering we, we, the flame. We, Kyle, we got two hours, and we're not going to waste any of it on this <laughs> this joke. It's probably going nowhere. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the Jets like, like, fall to three and eight after a loss to the New England Patriots. It was a close game. Um and and you know the Jets moral had their victory fair that that we'll get to that in a second the Jets had their fair chances to win um but you know overall it was a good game I was at the game uh we'll get into my experience at MetLife in a second um but you know th- there are definitely some young bright spots on this team uh, including Leonard Williams Darren Lee Quincy Anunua Brian Winters there are a lot of them and there are some guys who who need to go in the off season mainly Darrell Revis uh one of the veteran wide receivers. Uh, one of the defensive linemen, and just really an overhaul of the depth on this team. Uh, it's going to be some of the things we'll talk about. Um, but, you know, overall, I thought I thought the Jets played well. A lot of people were predicting, you know, the Patriots going to be a lot. I personally knew it was going to be a close game. The Jets and Patriots always play each other super tight. Um, so, I, you know, it, it, it was a fun game to go see. Uh, and, you know, I guess I guess it was the best-case scenario. At this point, I'll never cheer against the Jets um, but and, and especially when it got down to the last two minutes, don't get me wrong, I was I was screaming my lungs out for the Jets. Um, but it, it was probably the best case scenario to, for a game. Um, I I got to see a fun game, uh, a lot of touchdowns, but in the end they lose, so they got the higher draft pick. So overall, it was it was a good experience. I think I spent no joke. I'm not I'm not even kidding. Nine hours at MetLife Stadium. Um, so that was. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, so so that that was that was a lot uh, of time. And you know I, I showed up early. Um, unfortunately, some of the guys from from Jets fan media couldn't be there. You know, Jay and Tyson. Uh, and by the way, our condolences and prayers go out to Jay. He's dealing with a with a personal family thing, um, so just keep him in your prayers. And then Tyson tore his meniscus, um, MMA fighting or something crazy. Um, so he wasn't there. But you know, overall, I still thought the the MetLife experience was fun. Um, they definitely have some issues. You know, I, I've been to two Jets games, three NFL games in my life, and the other two have been uh, at CenturyLink Field. Um, the, the home of the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, every defensive play for the Seahawks, I mean, it's loud. People are on their feet screaming. So, you know, a two-yard run by – it was a Jets-Seahawks game I went to in 2012. A two-yard run by the Jets um, before that play was louder than any play that I saw, in, in, including the fourth down play against the Patriots. I mean, that's a that's the big difference between the two stadiums. Um, I mean, because Seahawks fans just get loud every single play. Um it, it it was fun. It it was it was it was fun to go watch him play, um, and again I got a ton of autographs. I got to to speak to some of the guys. That was fun. We'll we'll, we'll talk all about that. Um, so overall, it was a good experience. Um, but but some of the things to talk about and uh, the negatives to MetLife Stadium because in our last episode, Jay, um, we were talk we we talked to him and he was telling us about you know his experiences at MetLife Stadium and the whole PSL you know. Outrage that that that's, you, the MetLife Stadium was plenty of things wrong with it uh, when it comes to PSLs and getting loud. Um, one of the things I noticed is, I mean, they're they're completely trying to get rid of the JTS Jets 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 chant, which is something I'm kind of pissed about. I thought I think that's maybe the most you know defining um, chant in the NFL, if you will. And 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 you know it, during kickoff, it literally went. It was it was pretty quiet. It was J E. Yeah, and then it just fade off. It, it was the uh, Kevin, the producer of Let's Talk Jets. That's our Jets radio. Producers are people too. There, there you are, Kyle. 
You're you're alive. Good to know you're still alive. Um, he literally said that was the yeah. first time we've ever yeah. seen it die out. Uh, and it's just like it doesn't make any any sense to me why the Jets don't have it. You know, a J and then an E and then a T S. Jets, Jets, Jets on the jumbotron. It did, get the fans involved. Um, you know, I'm I think sorry, that's I, illegal. I'm no, pretty sure that's yeah. No. Arthur Blank got in trouble for it for why? doing for doing the rise up cheer in no, Atlanta. No, yeah, Kyle, you're stupid. <sighs> no, I don't. Don't pump the audio. I'm saying have the visual J and then the visual E and then the visual T. Um, so Kyle, no, please. <laughs> um, yeah, so so they they can. Uh, How would that I help think, though? Because Kyle, I don't think you realize if you go to the game, I, I, you know Jetman and uh, I'm spacing on the other man's name who does it. Uh, they got the the construction hat. Fifty-seven. Um, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, I know oh, who you're talking it, about. It, it'll come. Odd, it'll come back to me. No, odd something. Odd. I follow him. Scotty, yeah, Scott. That's yeah, thing. Scotty. Thank you, Gotham City uh, crew. Scott, yeah, something, whatever, whatever it is. Um, I mean, he does a good job um, in trying to get people fired up, but but it's just it's it's just completely disappeared. That's it's not something they've got to the work on. Uh, no, Kyle, but I mean, like people just don't know when to do it. I mean, they they would cut to him after touchdowns, and people kind of would do it, but you know, the casual fans not going to do it. And it's just it it was it was just kind of disappointing to see. Uh, yeah, and it you know really builds a home environment. Um, so that was one of the things. I mean, again, the noise, especially in that fourth down, um, going in, you know, it was a big fourth down. The Jets basically had their foot on the Patriots' throat. They can win the game here, um, and then it's just like no noise whatsoever. So that's disappointing. Um, now, luckily, I had some very good seats and I had some, a good experience because you know I, I don't go to any Jets games, so so we we, we got some uh, some sweet tickets and that. And so I'm sure my experience was better than the average uh, experience because one I went to a big game, so it was a pretty full stadium, um, and and I had good seats. But you know I was watching and I was talking to Kevin for for the you know just an average goer. If, if I were to go to two or three Jets games, I would probably sit you know in, in a normal seat. I mean, it, it, it's like a maze getting out of there. It looks like an Ikea store. I mean, people are doing zigzags, yeah. trying to get out. Of, it's just... It's, hey, it's also poorly built, just like Ikea furniture. Right, okay, Kyle. Um, so, I mean, there, there's all sorts of problems with that. Um, but, you know, overall, my experience at MetLife is great. I, I stayed a long time. I high-fived some players. Uh, I saw Fitzpatrick, uh, Mangold, uh, Anunwa, uh, plenty, plenty of guys. Um, and, and one of the things that, that I didn't tweet out that I should have is Nick Mangold did not look good at all when he was doing his pregame warm-ups. I mean, we watched him try to do the ladders, the thing with the foot, you know, the da, 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 whatever it was. I mean, he, he had no agility whatsoever. He, and then when he tried to do sprint, oh he looked God. a little better. Um, so, but, you know, apparently he's practicing, so he, he probably should play this week. Um, the other thing that I noticed is uh, Lozo, uh, Lorenzo Malden, um, you know, when he was leaving the stadium, he was grimacing. He was limping pretty bad. So that that ankle sprain looks pretty serious. I mean, he, he's you know obviously such a nice guy that he still managed to go. You know, I said, hey, you get better soon, loser, or something, uh, and he managed to. Um, you know, he was like, oh, thank you, something like that. Um, but you know, all in all, I thought it was a good experience at MetLife. I got Wayne Corbett's autograph, uh, Joe Klecko, Sheldon Richardson, Mark Gastineau, Mike Cagnan, and and a bunch of other guys. So, you know, I thought I thought it was a fun experience. Um, and Kyle, now let's talk about the game itself. Uh, what's it out to you? I guess it's a moral win for us. I mean, we went out there, we were competitive. You know, we showed the league that showed. <laughs> anyway, uh, we we showed the league that. Uh, we, I mean, we could compete with the best team in the NFL, arguably. I mean, pro- probably the Super Bowl winner. Let's let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, and, you know, it didn't affect our draft stock at the same time. So we we were just enough to suck. I think that's our motto for this year, just enough to suck. Uh, like you said, we saw a lot of really young guys uh, come out and show who they were, and that's really good. I mean, Quincy New was one hell of a player. And we Mike McCadden would be stupid not to get him an extension by the end of this year. I don't know when his contract expires. I would imagine we have him for at least... It's at the end of next year. Okay. So we need to sign him ASAP. I think same goes with Brian Winters, Wesley Johnson. Uh, Robbie Anderson, I mean, guy was trying to make a play. You know, just seems that rookie wide receivers for us always seem to fumble when we can, like, least afford it. It's just, like, the worst possible thing for a Jets looking receiver to do, because then you are cursed from that point out. You know, we saw Jalen Marshall do it. You know, then he lost his job. 
We saw Devin Smith do it. You know, he lost his job and got her, uh, and got hurt for like the eighth billion time. Uh, now we see Robin. Stephen Hill had to focus on catching it, so he he couldn't even fumble. He didn't have that opportunity. I just okay. just silence, just just nothing, nothing, Kyle. I, no no input at all. No, like here's the well, thing. Well, yeah, because your your analysis has just been so scathing. No, no, no. I don't see how that ties in because I was talking about rookies fumbling, and I yeah, get you. you're trying to rookie, you're trying to do a joke it. here. Oh, okay, okay, Did it really work? Yeah, I am the joker. Your jokes are so amazing. That that wasn't a joke though. That was sadness of John Isaac's know. career. <laughs> uh, continue. <laughs> By the way, you pressing the mute button for some reason I could still hear you even when you mute yourself. So you need to fix that then. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, just a moral victory for the Jets. You know, hated rival. We couldn't get the job done. Ryan Fitzpatrick played pretty decently. The fumble at the end really hurt. That I really wanted the Jets to win that game. And, you know, I'm pro-tank. Uh, but that was the one. So just Okay. You know what? We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to cut you off here because you, you're just, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pro-tank. And it was well, it's kind of hard when I hear like a PS4 controller in the background. You know, going, like, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Anyways, um, let let's get into some scathing takes. Uh, let's start with you. Do you think Todd Bowles should be the coach in 2017? Ugh. <laughs> Takes you 10 seconds to answer every single question. No, you you got to think about this. Uh, no, honestly, no. I don't think he's earned it. I don't. You know, Let's Talk Jets was talking about it last night. Uh, I respect at least two of the opinions on that show. And, you know, they've all seemed to come to the consensus that he doesn't, hasn't earned this job and doesn't deserve it next year. You know, this is something I've been saying, but I was, uh, in the back of my mind, I thought this was the game that the players were going to come out and show you how much they love Todd Bowles. You know, severely just not matched up well with the Patriots. I'll put it that way. Uh, Patriots are the much better team. You know, like I said, they'll probably be the Super Bowl winners at the end of the year. We'll probably have a top five draft pick. So just put that in the mind. They went out and they gave it their all for Todd Bowles. And I like that. And a lot of people were questioning Todd Bowles' time management throughout that game. I thought it was pretty decent. In fact, I agreed with the most things that he did. Uh, But just so far, these two seasons, the locker room has not been energized. There's no emotion. There's no passion, kind of like him. And I honestly think it's wearing on the locker room or, you know, it's starting to rub off on the locker room. His, you know, besides the Patriots game, his coaching decisions have been horrendous. Time management, very poor. Uh, challenges have been very poor. I don't, I don't understand how you get a challenge wrong. Like, I understand, you know, if you think it might go your way and it doesn't, but sometimes he just throws the challenge flag out there and hey, it's whoa, whoa, ridiculous. Whoa, whoa, He was two for two yesterday, or on Sunday. He, he, he got the... Um, uh, so besides the Patriots. He got the two-point yeah. conversion right, and he got... Um, oh, gosh, I'm spacing. What else did he get right? I don't remember. He got, he got something else, like a catch or something, something else. Um Correct. I mean, yeah, uh, but I see what you're saying. His clock management skills have been, you know, horrible. Abysmal. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he looks like he's clueless on the sidelines. He is clueless uh, in, in real life. Uh, it, it's hard to watch. Um, <laughs> he is clueless in real life. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I mean, I'm just saying when he's coaching a game, you look, you pan to him on the sidelines, and whether it's, whether it's a touchdown, he's just, mm, just and whether it's an interception, Ryan Fitzpatrick throws a pick six, it's just, mm, it just he, he shows no emotion. The guys don't look inspired. We look like we're sleepwalking. Um, yep. His clock management is trash. So the question is, is do you think the Jets owe him another year? He is the guy who brought him to ten and six last year. Ooh, um, unless you want to be, unless you want to be the Cleveland Browns, the NFL, um, you don't want to just keep, you know, having a revolving door around the, you know, the coaching situation. You want it, you want a stable, um, you know, you want just a stable uh, a force at, at the top of your, uh, you know, a franchise. Um, so do, do you argue to bring him back? Maybe maybe you put. It more on the offensive coordinator, the players on the field, your quarterback, uh, your GM. I mean, there, there's all sorts of things that the Jets, you know, have wrong with them. So, is, do you think Todd Bowles is the main, uh, should be the main scapegoat for that? 
Personally, um, you know, as much as I'd love to see, you know, some guys are saying Tom Coughlin over. I don't think he's going to the Jets. I oh, think he's heck going no. To, I, don't, I think he's going to the BC. Um, but no, if, if Tom Coughlin was really interested in the Jets, I would think about it hard. Um, and then you have, well, okay, do you, then you could go to Josh McDaniels, Kyle Shanahan, um, some of the other guys. Uh, you could also then say, you know, we're not going to fire Todd. We're going to fire some of the coordinators. Maybe it's Chan Gailey. I don't think he's going to fire Casey Rogers because it just seems like that's his version of Dennis Thurman. It's yeah. he's not a real defensive coordinator. It's just kind of their defense. It's not, you know, Casey Rogers' defense. Um, so I think you could see Chan Gailey get fired. And if he gets fired, maybe you'll see a guy like maybe Norv Turner is probably the, the most attractive option because then if you decide to fire Todd Bowles midseason, you have a guy who could come in and definitely be your head coach. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of things to think about. So Kyle, um, let's say the Jets finish four and twelve. They get a win versus uh, New England. This is a surprising win. Um, Ooh, Christmas Eve. Ooh. Yeah, it could, be, it could be a fun little game. Uh, so yeah. so they they get the win versus New England. They're four and twelve. Um, do you fire him and give him another year and try to get Mac to to get more of his players in there and rebuild rebuild this roster, or do you fire and try to go get a guy like Tomlin? Uh, Tomlin, uh, Coughlin, uh, Shanahan, you know, whoever. Uh, Kyle Shanahan's off my radar, personally. I just, I just don't trust him. Uh, Josh that, was, that was the first guy. You, so when I asked you this question after the Seahawks game, because you were all about, you know, fire Todd Bowles immediately. Yeah. That yeah. was your first guy. That was the first guy you gave me. Well, what, what's changed? I, I honestly don't remember saying Kyle Shanahan. Uh, well, I, I will find this episode. All right. I, I, I'm very yeah. intent on finding Please do, because... I I honestly don't remember saying that, and I'm not, like, denying it. I just honestly don't remember saying that. Uh, Josh McDaniels, I would highly be interested in. I mean, dude's been under Belichick for how many years? Uh, so he's got he's got to be good at something. Uh, if we finish 4-12 and 12 and the quarterback situation is still not resolved, uh, I, I think you have to fire Bulls. I think you have to. And I understand, oh, you don't want to be the Cleveland Browns in the NFL. If he's not going to bring you anywhere, why keep him? He's terrible in the locker room, and he's terrible on the field. So what's the plus? At least Rex in the locker room was amazing. He got the dudes fire up for every game that we beat. Whoa, 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 whoa. (laughs) Rex Ryan's locker room uh, treatment was not amazing. He had no idea what was going on. It was evident during the 2008 season when Antonio Holmes and Wayne Hunter were fighting, and he, 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 I believe he came out and said, I had no idea that was happening. Like, Rex Ryan's locker room um, performance yeah, was not good. Like, the chem- the, the chemistry, the chemistry between the guys was not good at all. I, I get what you're saying. The, a lot of guys on that defense, not necessarily that offense, but that defense loved the guy and went out there and played their hardest for him. I guess that's your point. The, the guys on offense also loved them and Nick Mangold, you know, Sean Green, LT. And there were a lot of guys who loved Rex Ryan. No, oh, when did when did Nick Mangold come out and to confess his love for for uh, Rex Ryan? I don't know if he's ever uttered the words "I love Rex Ryan," but I've never. <laughs> but I've. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you something. Nick Mangold is a scary dude. I walked past him and with and I didn't even realize it at first. And I turned around and I he or I just looked up and he was just right there. And he's just like the scariest man I've ever seen. Um, he, with his he flowing looked, locks. He looked angry. Let's just put it that way. Um, yeah, I mean, this head, whole head coaching thing is going to be a question until pretty much we hit Black Monday. Uh, and if he's not fired then, then I think we'll know um, that, that Todd Bowles will be the coach of 2017. If you want a prediction, though, I, he'll be the coach. He'll be back. I, I don't see a way they fire him unless there's some other just, you know, locker room fighting and some, you know, they just need a whole um, remodel. Um, no, Kyle. How far are you willing to go on cleaning the house uh, of the roster? Do you, do you believe this Jets team, um, like at the beginning of the year, a lot of these Jets fans thought, you know, we have a lot of pieces. We definitely are talented enough to make the playoffs. Do you think the Jets just need to, to, to rip out some parts in their depth and change a few starters around? Or do you think they need a complete upheaval, you know, get rid of Revis, get rid of Marshall, get rid of Decker, get rid of Mangold, get rid of, um, you know, David Harris, Muhammad Wilkerson. Are you, are you just – saying a complete rebuild, you know, shut everybody out, or are you saying, you know, maybe you get rid of Revis, maybe you get rid of one of the wide receivers, you get rid of Harris maybe, um, you get rid of Clady, you get, you know, maybe, maybe just a few here and, there, here and there. Are you in favor of just complete rebuild and, and just set your eyes on, on um, you know, a drafting for the few uh, next few years? 
No, I, I'd rather just, you know, get rid of a couple guys. Uh, the complete rebuild, I think, would just be not logical for us. If you really look at this team, the difference between us and the Patriots is they have a quarterback and they have a head coach. You know, you give us a quarterback and, you know, say Todd Bowles gets a little better, the Jets are a playoff team. And, you know, obviously there are other positions we obviously need to address, but, you know, good coaching and time can fix a lot of those problems. I don't think a complete rebuild really solved much. In fact, it probably sets us back. I, mean, I don't I don't understand getting rid of Brandon Marshall. I mean, maybe, oh, you have the young guys, but let's remember this is their first year in the league. Let's not act like they're definitive starters. I mean, Robbie Anderson looks pretty uh, – looks like he's got a bright future. Jalen Marshall, don't really know at this point. You know, Sharon Peaks primarily a special teamer at this point in his career. Uh, if I were to get rid of a wide receiver, it'd probably be Decker, unfortunately. I love Decker, but, you know, injury-prone, uh, contract's a little hefty, and, you know, without Fitz, I mean, he's I don't think he's going to put up the same numbers because, let's be honest, Fitz and him are pretty close, and Fitz, that's like a safety blanket, and that's definitely been shown on the field this year. So if I had to get rid of a wide receiver, it'd be Decker. But I'm definitely keeping Marshall. Because, honestly, I think if you take away Marshall and you just put Q at number one, I don't think Q's going to have the same results. I think he's a very good player. I think we have something special, but I don't think he's ready to be number one yet. I don't Because I, he'll just start getting double teamed. I mean, Brandon is taking double teams the majority of these games, and that's why Q's getting open a lot. Same goes with Robbie Anderson, and same went with Eric Decker when he was well, – uh, well, Kyle, well, I mean – I see your point here. Uh, the, the, this is the same thing I thought. I mean, I didn't I didn't realize how you know important Eric Decker was to this offense because yeah. I mean Brandon Marshall is an amazing receiver, but and, and so is Quincy Nunu and Robbie Anderson. And I get the argument. Well, you know, even though Decker went down, you have Quincy Nunu, you have Robbie Anderson. The difference between Decker and Nunu, they're very two different wide receivers. And you can make the argument that Nunu was better or Decker's better, or whoever. Obviously, Nunu has more promise. But the thing was, is Decker's always open. Decker was open every single play. He's the safety valve, as you said. Um, so, you know, Mar- if you look at Fitzpatrick's read last year, reads last year, it'd be, look to Marshall. Okay, he's double teamed. Now let's look at, you know, Decker. Oh, he's got a single coverage, and he's open. Boom, fire. Decker has the touchdown or a first down or whatever. He was just always open for that reliable 5, 10 yards every single play. Anun was more like Marshall. He's the boom or bust type of guy. He might go a game with one catch and 10 yards, or he'll go off and have 12 catches, 150 yards, and two touchdowns. You know. Well, in all thing. fairness, I do. He's I, that type of receiver. In all fairness for Quincy, I do think that's primarily because of quarterback play. I mean, there have been a lot of cases where, you know, film has pointed out Quincy Numa is open. Brandon Marshall is open. Just quarterback play. If you gave the Jets a half-decent quarterback, uh, let's say Fitz Tony plays like... Romo. Are, are uh, we both on the Tony Romo hype? I'm not necessarily on it. I'm just I'm making a lot of uh, I'm going to have to see where the Jets are going because I won't want what's best for the team. If Max oh, thinks... my God. Are, are, I, are you serious? What? No, well, <laughs> you're not giving me an answer. If you had to choose Tony Romo, would you take him? Who was right my now? other option? Geno Smith, uh, Josh McCown, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, Christian Hackenberger, Bryce Petty, uh, Brian Hoyer. Um, maybe you get a guy in the draft falls to you. Like, who are you, who are you going with? For me personally, Tony I'm Roma. not. Yeah, you're going Tony it, Romo. It would be Tony Romo. The only thing that I have on Tony Romo that that's that would you know hold me back from from taking him is, is what type of commitment is he? Because we know he's going to get hurt. That's pretty much a guarantee. So if you yeah. can sign him to a one year deal. Um, or a two-year deal with the first year fully guaranteed uh, for you know $25 million over two years, uh, and as we said, $15 million guaranteed. So he gets 15 in the first year, and then he has a $10 million set, you know, whatever the contract is, maybe $30 million total. I don't, I don't know. Then do you do it, or, or, or are you saying you need, like, because uh, I, I think that's the perfect type of deal for Tony Romo, because if, if he gets hurt, um, you know, it, you, you have to put in Bryce Petty or Christian Hackenberg. So I, I look at the Romo deal as are, they're buying time for, for one of the young quarterbacks because we know they're slow learners. We know they're not ready. So if you feel Geno Smith is going to give you the best chance to win, then you go with him. Uh, and if you're trying to go with the rebuild, you go with him. But if you feel like this team is a few pieces away, 
then you draft well, you cut a lot of the dead weight, including Revis, or maybe you only restructure Revis. Maybe he retires. You don't know. You cut some of the other guys, Clady yeah. Harris, um, and then you, you fill those holes, and then you bring in a guy like Romo. He'll play, you know, eight games, uh, and when he goes down, hopefully that extra eight weeks is, is enough uh, and one of the quarterbacks is ready. Um, and, and I think that's the strategy the Jets are going to have to take. Now, I, I agree with you that in the offseason, we have to see which direction the Jets are going. Are they going to lean more towards – Hey, this this is a win now roster. Uh, we're gonna Which we're gonna is. keep both we're gonna keep both Decker and Marshall. We are gonna restructure Revis. Um, we're gonna cut Harris. We're gonna cut Clady. We're gonna bring in you know um, Jason Whitworth from the Bengals. We're gonna bring you know if they start doing that, then you know okay this team believes they're a win now team. Then I think you'll see a Romo signing uh, because then you pair Romo with Decker, Marshall, and Nunwa, a solid offensive line. They bring back Matt Forte. Then you have a veteran team, so another very old team, and then you're rolling with them. Now, you could also see them go with the youth movement. So, so we'll, we'll discuss that. Let's move on, uh, and then we're going to bring on our, our, our first caller of the night. But let, let, one more topic. You, you wanted to give your scathing take on Darrell Revis. So, Kyle, you have the open mic. Darrell Revis, um, give, give your thoughts. Uh, pitiful. One more to describe him this year. Pitiful, lackluster, no effort giving. I'm going to stop there. Darrell Revis has shown that he does not want to be on this field anymore. And I don't blame him. He's old. He's cashed in. I get it. He's done. But you made a commitment to this team. You signed your name on that dotted line, and you got $17 million dollars to come in and get burned by the number one every week cost us this game, the game that meant the most to us this whole year because the season was over. You cost us this game. You're acting like a rookie. You're acting unprofessional. You want to go and tell your, you know, your friend who will tell Manish Mehta, I don't want to be out there anymore? Then leave. Retire. You're a burden. You're leaving a sour taste in our mouth. If you come back for another year, nobody's going to support you. You're going to continue to get burned. You're getting burned by J.R. freaking Smith on Twitter. You know how bad J.R. Smith is? He had to get carried by LeBron to get a ring. He JR, walked off the court last week or last night and, and hugged. He, he, um, yeah, he didn't Jason know he was in the game. And he, like, let the game when he shot go in or whatever it was. I know it was a pretty big play. All right, that, that's how bad J.R. Smith is, right? The dude who's ridiculed in New York. And now, Revis, you're slowly evolving into J.R. Smith, a washed-up has-been who betrayed on his team to go get a ring. I was okay when they traded you, right? We got a first-round pick. That, you know, we got Sheldon out of it. I'm cool with that. You know, it's fine. You do your thing in Tampa. You did pretty decent there. You know what? You, you go in free agency, you go to the Patriots. I was upset about that. I'm not going to lie. You got your ring. You helped them. Uh, I forgave you for that. You came back to this team. You played the media. You played McCagnan. The first year, you know, we all realized you lost a step, but, you know, maybe you were still the island. We all thought you whoa, were. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That first year, especially the first 10 games, he looked he looked the, the, the 2010 Darrell Revis. So, so yeah, that's what stuff. I'm saying. But towards the end of the year, he lost a step. Anyway, you know, you lost a step. We... We forgave that. You're getting old. We understand. You still deserve your money. You're loyal to us. And then this year, you come out. Your play is lackadaisical. Your effort, terrible. All right? You have no support anymore. And then you're just out here like it doesn't bother you. I know it eats you alive on the inside. You're a competitor at heart, so why aren't you showing it out the field? Contribute something. You want to come back next year or you don't? Retire or stay, but you better take a pay cut if you stay. $17 million for this bullcrap effort? Bull Come crap. on. I, 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 <laughs> you, you, you were deciding between words there. I, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, honestly, screw you, Darrell Reeves. Okay, I hope. Okay, okay. No, I mean, this is just pathetic. No, Ben, honestly, sit here and tell me you're okay with this effort. I mean, look, Darrell Rivas. I think I think some of it is he's clearly hurt. He's grimacing after every play. He's oh, holding his knee after every play. They um, go on the should, IR. He, yeah, he should not be playing. He's hurt. And you know, you mentioned how he's such a competitor. I believe he is a competitor, and I believe that's why he's why he's playing. 
um, is because he, 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 you know, he, he's hurt, but he wants to play through it. And no, honestly, but that, here's the thing for that. All right, uh, if he was hurt enough, the doctors would not let him play. All right, we saw the same thing. With, remember, he didn't tell them he broke his wrist. He, he, he played through a broken wrist last year, which is the beginning of his downfall. I think you're starting to see age injuries, um, his body catch with the, up with him, uh, and, yeah, I mean, maybe a lack of effort. Uh, I definitely think – you know, after he got his concussion against the Houston Texans and he had watched the concussion movie, I think he, he's been a little, you know, scared to tackle as well. That's, think, that's a good know, point. I, that's a good point. I've seen that. I, I actually think that that movie scared him a little bit. I, I think you have a really good point there, Ben, actually. but uh, I finally got it, Kyle's approval on something. Yeah, I actually like that. Because that was a good movie. That actually scared me. Uh, <laughs> but um, if you're playing Hurt, so is everybody else, all right? It's the NFL. If you're not playing hurt, you're not playing, all right? And honestly, the way well, <laughs> there are definitely some guys who are playing, you know, pretty fresh. Let's not be stupid here. Who? Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Right, wait a second. Wait a second. He yeah. has that knee thing. Hold on. Yeah. Matt Forte. Let's say Matt Forte. Let's say. Been dealing with a hamstring thing all year. Okay. okay. And the running back is not a good example, seeing as they literally have to run through a line of like. 300 plus pound dudes almost every single play. Okay, ben Ijelana. What's Ben Ijelana dealing with? He had an injury. He's, he, was, he missed like two games this year. No, he didn't. Okay, yeah, he whatever. did. It, it doesn't matter. I get your point. Darrell Revis, um, you know, he, he's, he's got to change something, and I think he, he's either getting hurt. Uh, personally, I do want him to return. Yeah. My, my whole thing is, as I do want him to return next year, I don't want him on the $17 million cap charge. I think he, he needs um, to restructure his deal. Maybe he's only making $10 million next year because, look, that's a lot of money, uh, and I don't think he's making that anywhere else. But then here's the catch. Is he's not going to be your number one corner. You bring in a guy like Stephon Gilmore or Tremaine Johnson from the Rams, somebody young, somebody who can take that number one job. Then you got the number one guy on the number Quincy one receiver Wilson. and Darrell Revis, who has done fairly well against number two receivers while playing hurt. So that was that would be what I would handle Darrell with. The rest of the roster, you have to see you know which direction. I think they do need to rebuild uh, some of it and you know rally around the young guys. So whether we need that to is build Romo, depth. Yeah, a depth on this team has been an issue for it really since the 2010 playoff teams. I mean, you go back and look at these teams. I mean, the guys that are that are the depth of this team, it's just it's awful. It, it's it's the who your your backup linebackers, Julian Stanford, uh, your backup you know hey, hey. defensive linemen are Julian Stanford's no a freak players. athlete. There are no name players on your defensive line. Who's number 75 again? I have no idea because the Jets signed him and he was playing snaps. Because Muhammad Wilkerson, you know, was was coming out, in and out of the game. You have guys on your offensive line that nobody's ever heard of. I mean, the the depth on this team is, is you know, it affects your special teams for sure. You've seen that on kick, re, you know, you know, coverage, kick uh, returning, um, even you know, field goal, you know, block, blocking for the field goal kicker, all sorts oh, yeah. of stuff like that. Oh yeah. There, there's 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 all sorts of holes around this team, and not necessarily on the top layer because if you look around on the top layer of this team. They're fairly solid. It, it, it's underneath the cracks where you see some some discrepancies. Anyways, we're going to bring on our first caller of the night. Uh, and 917, um, you are on. 917, you're speaking with Ben and Kyle from the Jet Take. How are you doing, man? What's going on, folks? It's, hello? Oh, oh, yeah. Can you hear yep, me? There. Hey, what's going on, fellas? It's Cordial from Gotham City Crew. How's everything going? It's going. It's going well, man. I, just, yeah, we've been we've been seeing your your Twitter uh, notifications, and glad you could call, oh, in, man. Definitely, I think um, you guys are definitely hitting on a lot of points, and it's almost like, where do you go? Do you go from the the management perspective? Do you go from the fan perspective? Do you go from the the being at the Met Life element? There's so many there's so many avenues to go on to even a lot of things that Jason from Jets fan media talked about, even mm-hmm. getting out. I think one of the the hardest thing, I know we were tailgating at D 10 with, with Scotty on Sunday and it was literally an hour and a half after the game, just there, you know, and, and now with another issue at hand in the parking lot, now the Uber line just wraps around where you're coming in from the, the parkways it goes then through where D and G split, so that's another issue at hand with the mm-hmm. the total layout where there's literally at least 55 Uber cars. So that's kind of another thing that extended your nine hour day. But kind of um I don't know. You look at the 
things to address. I don't know. You look at the Cowboys, how many years of mediocrity did they have after that successful run did they have, you know, and everybody called their picks unsexy, unsexy, unsexy for so long. And I mean, that all line is just, we all, we all tell and probably just drool at what a beast it is. You know, what do you guys think about the rebuild mode? But I think we'd have to be informed as Jet fans, like, hey, this is the plan of action. And with this new administration basically being Fort Knox with any type of information coming out, I think that's where us fans are, are frustrated because I know on Mike and Mike and Mike and even um, the Michael K show, they speak about kind of, you know, McCagney, come out, let the fans know what's going on. We're frustrated. What What's happening? He's had this, this um, always the protocol of no um, interviews throughout the season. What do you guys think? Well, yeah, I mean, you touched on a couple of things there. We'll, we'll start with MetLife Stadium. And, of course, you know, I'm probably not the best person. Uh, e- either of us are probably, the, me or Kyle, probably not the best uh, people to, you know, talk about it because I've been to the stadium once, and Kyle, I don't think you've ever been to the stadium. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as far as some of the, and, and I, you know, sat in good seats, so, you know, I didn't necessarily get the average fan experience. But I definitely saw some flaws. However, I mean, I do think, you know, I was there for nine hours, but I wasn't there for nine hours due to traffic or anything. I, I mean, Kevin was telling us the traffic's really bad. We were taking the train anyway, so so it didn't even matter. But I said, you know what? Ah, oh, brilliant. Let's, yeah, <laughs> let's just let's <laughs> just skip out on all the the you know the the traffic getting out of the stadium. I was like, I'm just gonna go wait by the player lot. Some players will come out. You'll get autographs, and by the time you know they kick you out or whatever, you'll probably get you know ten or so autographs, and you know the lot will be clear. That's that's what I did, and it was and it worked out pretty well because when I was leaving. There was nobody around the stadium. I was there when the gates opened. I was there when the gates closed. I, I had to cash in on, on some of the hours. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it just looks like the, the, the design of the stadium, the exit and entrance uh, isn't very, you know, sharp. The, the, the stadium doesn't feel very alive. It was half full of Patriot fans. There's, there's so many things wrong with it. Um, and, you know, people complain about the ticket prices, but it's, it's 20th in the NFL, so it's not that bad. Um, I think I think the... Uh, Kevin was saying, you know, the PSLs or at least the season tickets are in between the 20s. And if you look in between the 20s, um, there's 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 so many empty seats. That's where the most of your em- empty seats are on the lower level, in between each 20 yard line. Um, and, you yep. know, and then then of course, you know, behind the end zones, that's all packed and stuff. And so then then you get you know some noise from there. But in between the 20s, which is probably the biggest you know uh, chunk of your stadium, maybe it's just a lot of gray seats. And, and that you know. W- we we have to see what Woody Johnson will do because you know I'm glad Jay, who's a guy who he does carry some magnitude at least with the Jets organization, um, you know hopefully Woody Johnson will see some of the issues he's pointed out and address some of them and maybe we can have a lot a more live atmosphere because it's not like uh you know Scotty as you said or Jetman or whoever the other guys who lead the chant you know aren't trying to make noise in the stadium but it just it's so dead it, it I mean. It, it, that fourth and five, I, they were showing kids on the jumbotron pretty much up to the snap, oh. and so no nobody's even making a noise. They're just watching, you know, some kid dab um, to, to you know some music, and then all of a sudden Brady's throwing for a first down, and that was the game. I mean, every Jets yeah. fan should have been on their feet, you know, slamming the chairs in front of them and screaming and trying to make noise. I mean, I don't think Tom Brady called one timeout due to due to the noise. I, we, I got all excited. We yeah. were making a lot of noise, and all of a sudden there's a timeout. I was like, "Yes, we called." And it was Todd Bowles called the timeout. I was like, "God." Yep. So, you know, there, there's a lot of things wrong with that. Um. So, but you know, I, overall though, I think if you look at some of the stuff, like I know the the VR, you know, tent booth, whatever. You know, it's kind of stupid, but you know, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, I thought you know the overall feel outside of the stadium and even inside that felt like you know New Jersey, New York. That felt like. It, it, that felt like, you know, a New York football team. The stadium itself is pretty. So it has some good, you know, it could be a really, uh, it could be a stadium full of character, but it's just not right now because it's missing a few key elements. Um, now to talk about the team. Um, now, do you personally believe the Jets should, um, you know, completely rebuild this roster in the offseason, or do you think they should, you know, pick and choose a few veterans to let go and, and, and you know, keep this team competitive uh, for 2018? And, and that includes, you know, because Matt Forte is not a guy I particularly love. I don't love, you know, running backs over the age of 30. But, you know, it, it, if you're saying they're not going to completely rebuild, guys like he, he's going to be back, uh, David Harris might be back, guys like that. So, so are you taking that side? Or are you more, you know, cut Forte, cut David Harris, cut Revis, cut Marshall, cut Tech? You know, are you, are you that side? Where, where do you fall on the spectrum of, of rebuilding the Jets? I think for 
the rest of remaining this year, definitely would love to see the youth movement because everybody brings it up, you know. We all speak about what do we have, what do we have to see, you know. And then the other side of the spectrum is we're not seeing it every day. But as fans, I want to see what does Petty have, you know. He might have been drafted as, as a backup, but what else do we have right now? And I think the thing is we look at it is where Hackenberg drafted in the second round where that's such a pivotal spot that that's where the fans' frustration comes from. So I, me personally, I just want to be told what the plan of action would be moving forward because we all know it was a win-now team, and then look where we're at right now. So if it's building to shore up, build through the draft, you're looking at the lifelines that what McCagnan does, okay, let us know so you can see what the direction is and you can start seeing the unfolding of it. But if it's win now, we're trying to shore up because it's always we're not bad enough to get a great game changer like Peppers out of Michigan or never great enough to make the playoffs. It's always that mid-grade. So we're always drafted in the the late first round post-10 where we got to be those game changers. So I'm of the mentality, let me know what you're doing and I'll support it so that I don't emotionally continue to destroy myself. So Yeah, me too. Kyle, Kyle, you could chime in here with, with your thoughts. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, that, you know, you want to be told what's going on. I think the Jets, or Woody Johnson, I should say, said pretty clearly what was going on when he fired John Idzik, a guy who wanted to save money and rebuild. He fired him, all right? I, I think Woody Johnson wants to win now. I think he's been pretty clear there. And I think, whoa, 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 wait, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Now, John Idzik rebuilding was not good rebuilding. It wasn't like John Idzik was cutting all our players. We were going 4-12, and 12, but we were getting good prospects. We got guys like Anunwa and Sheldon Richardson, but you look at D. Milner and Geno Smith and a lot of the Idzik 12 that hey, did not pan hey, out. Geno is still a possibility. Okay, may- maybe Geno, but then you have to look at Shaq <laughs> Evans and, and who was the other receiver we took? Jalen um, Saunders. Jalen Saunders <laughs> and uh, all the other horrible picks out of that Idzik 12. Uh, let, let's not call Idzik the goat here. So so continue with your point. But keep in I'm, mind, I'm the not firing of Idzik goat, wasn't... But okay. he was the guy who was doing the rebuild, and Woody Johnson fired him. You know, obviously the sucking part was probably pretty big in that, but Woody Johnson has also said he wants to win. And I don't blame him. He's lost for how many years he's won this, uh, run this team to the ground. I mean, I, I think the Jets are kind of in win now, though. I think they do need to adjust some things, though, before they can do that. Yep, correct. All right, well, l- let's move on here. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on, on Darrell Revis. We opened up the show and talked about him. Trash. What do you... <laughs> what what do you think needs to be done uh, about Revis? Do you think the Jets should bring him back um, on a reduced salary? Do you think he should retire? Do you think they should cut him? Do you think you know during this season he should be benched, uh, put on IR? What 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 are your thoughts on the whole Revis situation? Well, the way he, it has to be where on the field speaks volumes, and I think everybody from a fan perspective, we all we hold him on a shrine for what he did for Revis Island for what he's given us, but. It's of what's going on now. You know, is it the effort? Are you hurt? You guys brought about, you guys spoke about it playing through the, the injuries. You know, he's, he's lost that set. We all understand it because of age. You know, and then you get Tom Brady coming out and you say, you see him wincing, so he kept starting to target him. So what's the issue? Is it that he's not being held accountable? Did he really get scared from a lot of players? You even heard it when, when a lot of these players, when the concussion movie came out, it just totally changed a lot of their minds. But from it, it's you see that let some of the younger guys get out there. If it's if it's not tackling, if it's giving up on plays, you have to you have to set the the standard. The coach, the management sets the tone. It's like Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk always speaks about the CEO sets the standard and the feel for the organization. So. A lot of times it's this guy's messing up, that guy's messing up. But then when you look at the the CEO, the main person, it's, well, you hired that person. So from a Todd Bowles perspective, he needs to say, okay, you're not giving him the effort. It's next man up. And it's not where you have players meeting, missing meetings and they're benched for a couple of minutes or even a quarter. It's, okay, you're, you're sitting down. It has to be 
straight hard nose. You know, we play in New York, the media capital of the world, it set the standards of he's not tackling. He's not putting that effort. He's playing hurt. You have to bench him. Put one of these young guys in. So that's my thoughts on Rivas. And if he's not willing to come off that number that you guys even spoke about, that, that 17 this year, and then it's even a, a huge cap hit next year, if we're getting hit with all these caps, how are we going to ever progress as a team? So you definitely have to rework it. And if it's not, you definitely have to look and highly consider possibly even cutting them. Well, Interesting. I... And, and sorry, sorry, Kyle, to cut you off. So, uh, But I, I want to keep the same train of thought going. Does the same thing apply to a guy like Marshall or Decker, even though they're giving their all? The, I know Decker's hurt. Are, are, you, are you in that sort of mind of thinking that, that you need to clear space? Now, now, I know a guy like Revis isn't giving his all, and a guy like Marshall is, but Marshall is having a yep. down year. Um, so are, are, you don't want to face a situation kind of like Revis with Marshall in 2017 where he's giving it his all, or maybe he's not, and he's still not even putting up any numbers. Um, so, Zara, yeah. do you think we should move on from Marshall? Um, because, I mean, he's had a um, down year, and it's, you know, can be you know, due to some quarterback play and, and the Decker going out. Play. But, you know, you – you have to time it. You have to. You, the jet. Nobody could have predicted that that the the, the Revis downfall was going to be this steep. But so, so are, quick, are you? Yeah. yeah are, are you in the mindset that we should kind of you know get off the train of the Brandon Marshall thirty four year old receiver while we can, or are you riding him out until uh, until you know until his contract expires? I think definitely um, depends on what happens in the quarterback situation because you need those those leaders, he's the, the unsound, he's the, the voice in the locker room. He's one of those, you know, especially from his foundation to, to who he is. He's got that room presence. So if you're going to go full rebuild, rebuild mode, you still need those veterans that are going to have that positive impact. So he's given his all. I mean, we looked at, he went five games without a touchdown. He just finally, you know, he got that touchdown in the Patriots game. But, I mean, you need to – be selective with what veterans, what locker room presence, what efforts bring it about. So Marshall's number does affect us, but Revis is definitely, definitely a huge, huge hit. So I definitely think you need guys like Marshall around. You need to build that offense. So I'm not in favor of cutting Marshall. Yeah. And Decker, I know Kyle, you said Decker was so important before. Who would have, who would have thought, you know? It was definitely um, such a huge, huge impacted loss. Oh, well, I mean, let's be honest. You got a thousand yards last year. I mean, you take away a thousand yards from any team, and I think you'll see a large huge. difference. Yeah, uh, but it only adds on to it that our Fitz tragic savior best friend happened to be the thousand yard catcher. So I think there's definitely yeah. a difference there. Yeah, you guys definitely bring a lot of good points, you know, and it's even um. Like, what should we do? You guys definitely highlight so much. It's it's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's this. It's just frustrating because it's the why not us mentality. You know, mm-hmm. that gets we look from the other side. In my it, whole life, you know, oh, uh, I know I'm forever struggling. I became a Jet man because when the Jets practice at Hofstra, like guys like Kevin Mawai, Kotri, um, Kevin Swain, Pennington, they all attend the same church I attended to. So that's how I became a Jet fan at 13. So it's, it's we, we're all there, you know. It's in that life long struggle where it's not getting over the hump. So it's we have all these mm-hmm. great players, we have all this talent. What the hell is going on, you know? Is it, and then you look at the circle, you see all the memes on social media where the Ryan Fitzpatrick circle. It's like okay. Brings gets brought in as a backup. Player gets hurt, becomes starter, gets paid, and then it's the off the cliff. You know, it's in the beginning you're like no way, but then you're like holy crap, is it really? Is it really us? Are we doomed? You know, so it's 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 we all we're all at a loss of words. Yeah, I mean for sure. I mean I think Kyle and I are still struggling to you know to to completely articulate our our feelings on this season. Um, but who would you put the, 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 the most amount of blame on? Because, I mean, you could, I mean, this is one of the things I've noticed from watching the Jets this year. When we get a big play, I mean, let's, let's take the Inunua touchdown 
um, from from last you know from Sunday. I mean, he's thrown into double coverage. Anuno makes an amazing catch. It's a great throw. I mean, it's it's a tremendous play. Or you're, you you get your first down. It's in triple coverage, and you're forcing the ball, and it's just the perfect throw. When the Patriots or any other team gets a big play, the guy's wide open in the middle of the field. Um, I think it was Chris Hogan. They were on their own 20. It was a second down. He got like 40 yards. There was nobody even close to him. I mean, you can go throughout the year just blown coverages, blown assignments, confusion in the secondary, the number of over-the-top you know, plays that have attacked this team. It just seems like every single you know, play against this Jets defense is for 50 yards, and nobody's even there. And for the offense, I mean, when they're getting a good play, it's you know, amazing you know, plays and, and a good, still a solid play by the defense. Now, do you think that is more on um, you know, the defensive players, the offensive players, the, the coaching. I mean, what is it? Because part of me feels like, is this Bowles' defense? Um, you know, the substitutions is what Let's Talk Jets mentioned. Um, I mean, is it, is it just a scheme? The, what would you put the, the most amount of blame on? Because for me right now, I think it goes to each of the, the coordinators, and I'm going to count Bowles as a coordinator. If Chan Gailey's offense to me is not doing enough, they're getting too cute, uh, or they're not getting cute enough, they're either calling run, run, short pass, or, you know, wildcat up the middle, the halfback pass, you know, lateral, you know, bull crap. Uh, and, and on the defensive side, I mean, it just, it just seems like a bad scheme. But where would you put the most amount of blame? Yeah, I think definitely you hit it with Chan. I was going to highlight it's almost a very vanilla – um, offense, it's almost as fan, you can call what, what the play is coming up. And you start seeing it's run, 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 pass, or it's run, run, pass, run. So it's almost it's that vanilla consistency. But we even see when we're watching games, all of a sudden there will be this one random play that you highlight. All of a sudden it's, it's where did that come from? And the fan base gets excited. But then when you're looking from the defensive perspective, guys are playing almost prevent. They're playing – 10 yards, so they, they try to not get that big play that's been burning us, especially big time from the beginning of the season. So it's the coordinated, it's almost the, the fear of playing the man-to-man. It's playing more zone and off what I'm, when I feel like I'm watching the defense because that's what they'll get the short plays. Then the defense will move up to try to stop it. If it's going to be another short play for a first down, then it's all of a sudden the deep ball, and they're completely open. So it's almost as if the, the communication in the backfield isn't there the way it was last year. I, this, this is all great stuff. Kyle, do you have anything you, you'd like to chime in here? I think Kyle, Kyle might have died on us. Um, well, anyways, uh, he, he's, he always did not, takes Did it. not die. My computer is really slow, so when I press unmute, it doesn't unmute immediately. All right. Um, yeah, I guess Chan Gailey's offense is pretty bland, but who's going to be the replacement? I mean, you mentioned Norv Turner. You're talking about a bland offense. That's an offense that Teddy Bridgewater was able to run, so how bland could it get? I mean, um, Chan called a pretty decent game in the Patriots game. I think he needs to stop being cute, like you said, stop doing these stupid laterals and throwbacks and then the pitches. They just don't work. All right, the defenses can sniff this out if the linebackers are able to run. And I feel like that's what Chan Gailey hasn't realized. Linebackers are as athletic as running backs now. That's a huge difference in the NFL. Uh, I think just Chan needs to start realizing that he has so much talent on the outside, maybe stop trying to work inside. So that's all I have to say on that. Yeah, for me, I mean, I think you made a great point about, you know, uh, it, when, when he finally does do something surprising, it's a great play. Look at the Brandon Marshall one-yard pass. How many people in the stands do you think were saying, oh, this, I, I was one of the, I literally said, all right, this is going to be a run. And then, no, oh, you see the play action, single coverage, bam, touchdown. I mean, you, you, it's like when he finally mixes it up, good things happen. It just seems like it's very predictable. If Brandon Marshall's in single press coverage, he's going to him deep. If they're out of the, you know, if they're under center, it's going to be a run. I mean, it's just, it's very vanilla, as you say. So I think Chan Gailey would be the, the, the person I would put the most amount of blame. On the top uh, of the block, yeah. Or yeah, or at least, or at least, uh, you know, tied with Fitzpatrick uh, on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. I think it goes with the lack of effort from guys like Muhammad Wilkerson, and Darrell Rivas, um, and the the scheme by Todd Bowles. Kyle, any other topics you'd like to bring up? Because I, I know it's been a, a, a you know you haven't you haven't talked too much. So is there anything else you, you'd like to uh, bring up? 
No, not really. <laughs> really contributing a lot to to this show. Uh, a a few more a few more topics for you. Um, if you have to name five um, of the most important players on the Jets roster moving forward, five guys you would build around. So, so these are the only five you can keep on this team. Who would they be, a- and in an order, and, and why? <laughs> hmm. Most important offense or defense or collectively? Uh, collectively. Collectively. Number one, I would put Anunwa. And reason being is he's been that spark. He's been that solid, solid slot receiver. He's been what we need on offense, the excitement. Number two, I would look at um, – Definitely this Selvin is hard. Richardson. It, it is when you start really looking hard. at collective. You know, it's like those those Facebook on where they're like, okay, without um, without cheating or anything, you have to fill in the blanks, and you get caught thinking like, what's going on? But I definitely think Sheldon Richardson. You know, we have a lot of the the off the field issues that occurred, but you know, how many times? I mean, the extent of it. I know I've done a lot of stupid things in my life, so it's it's been um, pretty quiet for the most part this year, you know, but I mean, that speed, that, that athleticism that he has, he's definitely vital, you know, for, for that defense. Darren Lee, he's definitely stepping up. We're seeing a lot of the reports out there that he's becoming a general on the field, you know, um, giving out a lot of the orders, taking charge in that huddle. So we're really starting to see that. And then, Ooh, I think, um, the I haven't mentioned Leonard right? Williams yet. That's the one guy that I can think of that. Ben, oh, he, let him he was, he was going to be my – he was, he was coming up my last one. He's like my, my solid Willy Wonka um, <laughs> ticket coming in because the other ones collectively um, – oh, I think Winters, you know, really um, supporting what he's been doing because when we first got him, it was when he'd be filling in for um, – mangled especially in Miami and stuff like that the Miami game people are like oh god but you look at this year he's definitely we need to start putting a lot more effort he's coming to his own and then you said it Leonard Williams he's the big cat he's hands down just no problems just does his job becoming a beast so I think those would be the the five that I'd grow from all right dude is it my turn now? Is this, uh... yep, yep, Kyle, I'm, I'm giving you the, uh, the, the, the mic. Okay. Um, the, the que- what is the question exactly? I know it's like top five collective what to build off of? Yeah, yeah. Like if you could only keep five players on the Jets roster, who would you, who would you keep and build around? Ooh. In, in order. All right. Um, number one, Leonard Williams. I think he's the most dominant player on this team. You give him a couple more years, I think he'll be Aaron Donald level dominant in this league. Uh, Number two, I'd probably go Brian Winters. I think one of the biggest formulas for success in the NFL is a good offensive line. And I think he has the ability to be one of the best guards in the NFL. Uh, still need to work on the pass blocking a little bit, but he's he's got the run game down solid. Uh, number three would be Deron Lee. Uh, I think, you know, any young middle linebacker who has the ability or the God-given ability that he has, it, you definitely need to work with. Obviously, a first-round pick. Uh, four would be Robbie Anderson. The kid is just a weapon. He can beat you from almost every aspect on the field. He can beat you deep. He can beat you across. He's got decent hands. And I just love his determination. Undrafted free agent, fought his way onto this team, and he's deserved it so far. Then number five. um, God, there's so many young players on this team that... uh, I'd probably say Sheldon. And I put him so low because... I consider him a veteran at this point, but I think he's like under, what, 26? So I guess he's a young guy. Uh, I love his demeanor on the field. 
Uh, love his demeanor in the locker room. Obviously, he's had some troubles off the field, but since then, he's been pretty good. I um, think he's also a very dominant player. You know, him and Leo as a tandem, you know, that's beastly. I mean, we've lo- been lucky to have it for the past two years. Um, so, yeah, that would be my five. Yeah, and for me, guys, I mean, I'm I'm repeating a lot of the same guys you said. Leonard Williams, for me, number one. Um, number two, I'm going Quincy and Unwa. Then I got Darren Lee. Then I got Brian Winters and Bilal Powell. Those are my five guys because Bilal, Bilal Powell, Powell's is not young. He is not young. Drafted in 2011, Kyle. He's a five-year pro. He's 27, I believe, 26. He's, 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 he was, he's young I thought enough. he was like 28 or 29. Uh, I, we'll, we'll, I got to we'll check on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, last question of the night, and, and excuse me, I, I, I'm spacing. What, what, what's your name again? Uh, Claudio. Just like, hey, you. Oh, okay, sweet. Uh, well, thank uh, you. Whatever, 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 whatever name uh, works. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, he's 28. Well, yeah, 28. So, I mean, he's, he's, he's at least young enough. If, if you wanted a different answer, then I'd probably go into a guy like... Ah, uh, maybe like uh, uh, Calvin Pryor. Maybe would be the next guy. Maybe Sheldon Richardson. Other guys like that. All right. Last question uh, of the day. Um, Monday Night Football. Jets. Colts. Ryan Fitzpatrick just starting. Uh, how do you feel about that? I, I want to get your thoughts on that. I know you, you. You're one of the guys who who wants to see. Um, you know, young. You know, Petty and Hackenberg. Um, so how do you feel about that? And in the last question, uh, part you know, one B. Um. Do you think the Jets uh, should put in Hackenberg before the season ends? For Hackenberg, yes, definitely. Um, especially oh, no. at the, the stage that we're in. And the reason being is definitely not the last game because Rex Ryan's going to bring everything, so you don't want him to be destroyed. But maybe in, in San Francisco, not for an entire game, definitely not to start, but get some reps. You need that real game experience, maybe even a couple of plays, you know, four or five plays for him just to, okay, this is what it's like. This is the the big game, mental change, real world experience compared to, say, like textbook experience. So a couple reps, nothing more than that. In terms of how I felt about Rex Ryan, it's just, not Rex Ryan, about um, Ryan Fitzpatrick. It was the one where, again, you know, that's what I felt when, when they named him. You knew it was coming. And it was just essentially solidified. So we don't know. I don't know if it's, is it Todd playing for his job? You don't think so. And you would hope not because it's one good year, one bad year. Next year is the, essentially the tiebreaker when you look at it, that, that aspect. So it's, I'll be there Monday. You know, it's hopefully they can, um, Oh God, are you serious? You're going to that game? I got, I got season tickets where (laughs) I'm, I'm there. I'm every home game. So it's I will be there, and then um, so that's it. I'm just gonna be there chanting, and whether people stand up in the section or not. Well, uh, good luck to you. Um, <laughs> give out give out all your information uh, about you know Gotham City Crew and stuff. Oh, Gotham City Crew. Um, just we're a Jets fan supporter club, basically just focusing on the experience about being a Jet fan and just you know I know um, we're doing a hide your beers. Um, tailgate tour so just basically really focusing on the fans highlighting their tailgates it's about them so i believe um on instagram it's gothamcitycrew.com twitter gothamcitycrew.com but about saturday we'll announce what tailgate we're crashing and everybody's always more than welcome to come just you know add something to bring to the potluck all right well, well good to you guys are you guys are definitely good show definitely enjoy it and um keep doing what you're doing no, well, thank you. I mean, this, this has been maybe our most like laid back and just calm episode we've ever had. Um, nor, I think normally, it's the feel of us Jeff fans where we're at, right? Yeah, I mean, this is this is just almost depressing. I mean, it's it's not bad stuff. It's just it's like you know, the, in, if you go back, you know, five weeks ago, I mean, Kyle and I are yelling at each other and we're all getting fired up about a big game, and th- now it's just you know, season's over. It could take me to jail. Yeah, it's almost psychologically like that's why I think everybody's almost the the youth moment. Let's see what we have. You know, at least we're like, okay, Petty's great or Petty sucks. You know, we don't have a, a big enough pool of evidence for us fans to say thumbs up, thumbs down. And I think that's what we want to see. Well, um, good stuff as always. Oh, cool, final, final question. 
prediction for Monday night? Oh, as much as I hate hate to say it is, if uh, luck shows up, seventeen thirteen Colts. There we as go. As much I, as I hate it, is that is that the worst case scenario though? I mean, <laughs> it's not bad. I think it's going to be one of those ones where you know the showing of of the Pats game. You know, I think it's almost the the players don't want to further be embarrassed. They hear the rumblings. So that's why I'm thinking a, a close game of 17-13 with the Colts taking it, you know, because I think there's going to – Chan's got to – I think he's got to know he's kind of on the hot seat. So you would hope that he switches up and keeps going with the game plan that he did with the with the Pats and just keep beasting away to see what the offseason holds. Well, man, good so stuff be there. as always. Uh, <laughs> we, we appreciate you I calling I will be us. there. It, it's not uh, – yeah, and for going to the game. It's not easy Bring to a lot of beer. Too. Bring Perfect. a lot of beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy You're to talk just it. depressing Jets football for 30 minutes. I promise if you call in in the offseason, me and Kyle will be all happy because the Jets always win the Ooh, offseason. Got, got the just, draft, free agency, I mean, head coach hunting. I'm already fired up. I'm yeah, looking I'm all, forward I'm all, to excited, it. I'm all excited about I it. I want to go into it right now. I'm going to be honest. We'll get to it in a second, Kyle. And but when our season's <laughs> over in September, it's it's always hard to to keep a smile on our face. But but thank you so much for calling in, man, and, and look forward to hearing from you. Cool uh, for again. sure, guys. And remember, make tailgates great again. That's what we're focused on. <laughs> yeah. Make make the Jets Bam. great again. Let, let's do that first. They were never. Great. Well, they're they'll get there. We're, we're, <laughs> we'll take it step by step. We'll work our way from the parking lot into the field. Hey, I, I love it, man. Thank you. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Have a good one. See you guys. And that was that was Gotham City crew there. Good stuff as always, Kyle. Anything you'd like to touch on before we go to our next caller? Uh, yeah. Congratulations to Panda on Twitter. If you guys don't know who Panda is, Fitz Panda. Uh, he's like the head guy at L7. He got engaged. So congratulations to Panda. Panda, I hope you listen to this. Uh, congratulations to you, man. Big commitment there. Looks like a pretty expensive ring too. I can tell you sold your season tickets. In advance. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, that, that, that was your big announcement. Well, well, congratulations to to Joe. Uh, well, let's let's just keep it going to our to our next caller of the night, and this is Marcus. Uh, Marcus, woo! how you doing, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? And not much, man. We're we're, we're just just sitting in our depression. own uh, yeah our own bath of depression right now. Bath. <laughs> Yeah, I you know, that, was, that was the first word that came to mind. Marcus, uh, w- w- what are your thoughts on this Sunday's loss to, to the Patriots? Um, you know what, man? I'm not surprised. Like, I don't know. It was a good game. I didn't think we were actually going to hang in there. But, like, a part of me did because we always play the Patriots pretty good, especially at home. But um, I thought Fitzpatrick played decent. He did pretty good just that last drive. I wasn't actually surprised when, that, like, he got that strip sack or whatever, Chris Long came through. I wasn't surprised. I was, like, typical Jets, you know what I mean? But, guys, I don't know. I think, uh, like, we looked solid last week, but I don't know, man. We're not a good team, you know what I mean? And it's, it sucks to say because I'm, like, such a diehard fan. I just want our team to do good, you know. I want to, like, watch the TV and feel, like, enthusiastic to watch them play. Just even when the game started, I didn't feel the same fire. I was like, dang, here we go, you know what I mean? But no, you guys, yeah, I, I you're completely... You were the game, weren't you? Oh, yeah, I, I was there, and I, I completely feel the same way. I mean, it's just the fire really sense uh, that that week six loss to Arizona has pretty much just disappeared in, in, when I watched the I was games. At that, dude, I was at that game at Arizona. That was, like, Oof. the worst. It was, yeah, it was horrible. I went, it was my first Jet game ever, so I was so excited, and, dude, we just got, we didn't do good at all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that that would have been a tough first game. It, I mean, the first game I went to is the 2012 um, Jets-Seahawks game um, where yeah. we got just clobbered with, with Tim Tebow. Oh, man. Wow. saw Tebow for the first time. Man. Yeah, but how was the atmosphere at the stadium, man? I've never been to Jets Stadium. I wish it was not that good. I, I heard you on the Let's Talk Jets. You sounded like it was – the environment kind of sucked, but the stadium was cool. Yeah, no, I mean it, it was it was pretty it was pretty interesting. I, I thought I thought I thought the outside of the, the the stadium was was awesome. I thought I thought it, it was, it's it's a pretty stadium. It looks good. It feels like New Jersey. The only problems I have is just w- with the crowd. Um, I think 
I mean, like they're not getting loud, or, or the JTS Jets 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 chant is gone. So there, there's some difficult things, um, you know, uh, with 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 that uh, part. But but at least I enjoyed the atmosphere. I thought it was uh, I thought it was uh, fun. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought I had a good time. I got a lot of autographs, and it was a good game to go to. Now, as far as the Jets not being a good team, I think this is something that you know it's, it's disappointing to to you and me and all Jets fans. Um, how do you think the Jets should go about changing that? Do you think the Jets should, should go with the complete rebuild, or do you think it's just a, a, they're a few pieces away if they can get it right? Um, you know what? Honestly, I'm not ready to, like, I'm not ready for, uh, like, bring in a few people and make it right. You know what I mean? Because what, are we going to be good for a year or two? You know what I mean? Like, I'm tired of that. I think we should gut the whole thing. Uh, McCann- McCannahan, he's cool. I like Mike. He- he's a cool guy. He's a- he's chill. You know what I mean? Bulls, I don't know about Bulls. I thought the first year, I was like, heck yeah, we got a co- good coach. This year, um, I don't know. He's just like, like to copy what uh, what's his name? Tyson says, he's a zombie, man. He's a zombie. So it's like, Coach Bulls is a zombie. But I don't know. I don't know. I think we should rebuild, though, like for sure. I think, because um, like, we're not gonna. We're not getting any better. You know what I mean. And like, yeah, you could bring in a veteran quarterback next year. But like I was saying, it's gonna be good for two years. I think we just need to build through the draft. Um, it might be another like five. I think we should just do like what Jack, um, the Jaguars did. And I know they're not that good this year, but they have like solid pieces like around the defense and on offense as well. Blake Bortles didn't plan out, but like you know, like they they built through the draft and they have a competitive team. So I think, well, for the most part, kind of, but. I think we should do the same thing. I think we should just build through the draft and, like, make a winner. You know what I mean? Like, definitely draft offensive linemen. I mean, that might be, like, what – like, that's, like, the guts of your team. You know what I mean? That's, like, the first – you set the tone with your offensive line and if you have a good runner as well. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah for sure. I, th- I think the Jets, uh, they – they they have some things they got to work on in the offense and, and you know the Jaguars are a good example even though they aren't you know, they aren't doing too well this year. Um, yeah. Now, now to, to keep it rolling, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the, the special teams this year. I mean, I think you know really since since West uh, since Westoff we have not had a, a a good special teams unit. Um, in the preseason, we looks like we were finally going to have another good um, you know unit uh, for the special teams, um, but you know so far it's it's been awful. The Jets. Um, going back, you know, they allowed the, the game winning kickoff to Miami. Um, they, uh, they, they got a kick blocked. Nick folks missed a few extra points this year. Um, I mean, they, they're, you their had return a, game's a been anemic. Yeah, I mean, so just give you, give your whole thoughts on, on the special teams and, and how they're, they've been a failure this year. Yeah, it's just been frustrating. I thought Jalen Marshall, he showed a lot of potential in the, like, in the preseason games. I think he had, like, a few longer turns. So it looked good. It looked like we were making progress, special team wise. Um, I don't know, man. We're just I don't I don't know what it has to. I think it might be due to coaching, um, maybe personnel. I don't know because Jalen Marshall looked good, but then he keeps fumbling it, so it's frustrating. Given he is a rookie, but it's like, dude, your job is to go back there, catch the ball, hold on to the ball. You know what I mean? Try to gain positive plays, and he just doesn't do that. And then like even like the. Like per, like even um McCannahan, like he's he's making questionable calls. I mean like he got like a spiller and then he like re re signed Bross like how many times, like twice this year, maybe three times, I don't mm, even yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. He's just it it make, times. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, like McCann I don't know. McCannahan's supposed to be like that scouting guy, like his background scouting, so he's supposed to like see good talent, put it on the field, you know what I mean? I don't know I don't know what's going on though. It's just supposed Yeah, no, I mean I think Mike McCagnan, he he's he's got a, he's got a couple things in front of him that that he's got to do this year. Um, I, I'm excited for him to to draft a, another you know big draft. I'm hoping the Jets can get you know a lot of picks, whether that's you know trading Decker, cutting Decker, or trading um, you know Sheldon Richardson or Mahomes Wilkerson or something. I think the Jets need to get a few more picks. They're going to get a compensatory pick for Jarvis Jenkins. That should be a fourth round draft pick. Um, they're going to have all seven of their picks. So if they can get another pick. Uh, in there, a couple more picks in there. I think the, the Jets can, can build that. McCagnan can finally get more of his players in there. You mentioned, we talked about the special teams, you mentioned guys like C.J. Spiller. I don't know why he's on the roster and on the active roster and Devin Smith and Sharon Peak aren't. There, there are moves like that, that that I question. I don't know if that's on Mike McCagnan or if that's on Todd Bowles. Um, but speaking of Devin Smith, 
Um, he, he should most likely play this Monday. What are you expecting his production to look like um, on the field Monday? I don't think – I think maybe he gets – a handful of plays, maybe like 10 plays he's in there, because like realistically when people come back from injury, they're not just thrown back into the starting role. And I don't think he's even earned it even. Like, I mean, Robbie Anderson's doing really good. I know he's starting in place of Decker, and then you have um, everyone else too, but I don't think um, like maybe he gets like five, seven plays, and I think he's maybe targeted once or twice, and they'll try to deep ball, but I don't think Ryan Patrick will get it to him. I don't think it's going to happen because he's proven that he can't throw the ball deep. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes he can throw it, sometimes he can't. Sometimes he overthrows it, which rarely happens, but I think he had one earlier or last week, I think. It might have been a week ago, something like that. But, yeah, I think, uh, just to answer your question, I think he'll get, like, maybe seven plays, if that, because I know he's, Darren Lee, when he came back, he only had a few plays, too, like he wasn't in there. Yeah, I, I think you should. We should expect that, and it's it's really a lost season for the second year guy, and it's disappointing. Um, so we really won't get a chance to fully evaluate him till the end of next year. And we hope, we're, I'm hoping he's not one of those guys who's just always injured. But that's what it's looking like right now. Like another now, Milner. Right? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, exactly. Uh, D. Milner, um, even a guy like Stephen Hill. Um, now, now talking about the the quarterbacks, as you mentioned. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, cancer or deep or whatever. Who do you think the, the Jets quarterback will be in 2017? Uh, dude, I don't know. Honestly, if you – I have no idea. Like, it's up in the air for me. Like, I could probably even see him bringing back Ryan Fitzpatrick. And if they do that, I will – dude, I don't know. <laughs> I will quit this cool. podcast if they do that. I will quit. Dude, I would be right? done. Like, yeah, like seriously. I don't. I don't know, man. I, I could see them doing that. Like, seriously, I could because who else, you're going to turn it to, what, are you going to give it to Petty? You know what I mean? He's not even ready. Like, he came he came in, he looked okay. Like, given he came off of an injury a couple weeks prior. But, like, I don't know. We just have no development. Like, we're not developing players. Like, Anderson's coming along good. But, like, we're not developing a quarterback. <laughs> we had we were developing Petty and then we go and draft Hackenberg. And then you hear reports that Hackenberg's not even working on fundamentals, which is what he needs to be working on. Like, it just doesn't make sense that we had a quarterback in Petty, which everyone, I think, was kind of optimistic about Petty. Like, I had a good feeling about Petty whenever we got him. Like, I was like, maybe he could do something, you know what I mean? And then you go and draft Hackenberg. Like, it just, it's just questionable calls like that. That's just, like, it makes me shake my head. It's just confusing. Leonard Williams is a bright spot on this team, though. He is going to be a star in this league, like, for sure. And I want to say the same for Robbie Anderson, too, because he looks really good. Those are, like, the two main bright spots. I don't even know if you want to throw them in there, too. Yeah, Kyle, I mean, Kyle, would you like to contribute? Yeah, I mean, you've been silent for the last 10 minutes, Kyle, so I, mean, I was giving yeah, you the Kyle, open mic. Kyle, just like, Kyle, I'm yeah, telling you, uh, the, the, the like, Jets team really affects the mood of this podcast because it's, we're, yeah. we're all, you know, talking kind of quietly and you know, slowly and stuff. But and Ky- even Kyle, not- Kyle's the fieriest fire. He's he's full of fire, the I guess. Fire. Is that what it's, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to describe him. Um, but Kyle, what are your thoughts on all this? You know, Devin Smith and quarterback uh, talk and all types of stuff. They both suck. I mean, that's the end of the story, basically. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, there's there's some of the fire. Speak that truth, Kyle. <laughs> that's yeah, I mean. Devin Smith um, just wasn't really that good coming out of OSU. I I still don't understand the pick. I never understood the Hackenberg pick, and then you can vouch for that. We were doing that live show, and I said, I swear to God, if we draft Christian Hackenberg, I'm going to be very upset. And what happened like five minutes later, Ben? We drafted Christian Hackenberg. Oh, it made me so bad. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if you... You can't develop backup quarterbacks who have absolutely no potential to be starters in the NFL because, for one, they're not smart enough to do it, in Bryce Petty's case. Two, they don't have the fundamentals of football down, something you learn in Pop Warner. That's for Christian Hackenberg. And three, you don't have a coaching staff that's offensive-minded to develop these guys. You're going to put it in senile Chan Gailey's hand to develop quarterbacks? Come on now. That's just not... That's just not going to work. So there's the fire for you, Ben. No, I love you it. Go. All right, Marcus. I was excited, uh, oh, sorry, guys. I just want to get this in real quick. I was excited when Devin Smith was drafted, though, because I thought we had Decker, and then, like, they're, like, the intermediate, and you have Devin just going deep. You know what I mean? I was excited, but he just didn't pan out, I guess. Well, he's still, he's still a young player. He got injured, you know what I mean? 
maybe you can show some potential. But yeah, no, but. yeah, for sure. All right, Marcus, uh, last question for you, man. Who's winning Monday night? And, and give some predictions about some. So who who's going to play well? What's going to be the score? Just your overall predictions for Monday night, because you know that atmosphere in MetLife Stadium is going to be awful. I think there'll be twenty thousand fans there. Uh, and just to give yeah. some perspective, there's 80,000 seats. So <laughs> I, th- I think there's yeah. going to be a lot of people uh, who are dressed as gray seats uh, for Monday night. I honestly think I, – I, I really believe this. I think we're going to win that game. I think we'll win Monday yeah. night, which I don't want to win. Like, I really – like, okay, I'm not I'm not ever going to vote against my team to, to lose. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes I know – I like, am. Get, but, like, I want to see, like – Tanking doesn't necessarily mean putting young players and see how they do. You know what I mean? I want to see young talent. I think we'll win, though, because I think Fitzpatrick looked solid last week. And um, mm-hmm. weeks before that, he actually looked pretty decent. Like, he wasn't trying to get over so much. So I think we could get a win, but I'm really – I know it's bad, but I am rooting against it just because I want to get a good pick in the upcoming draft. I'm kind of yeah. looking towards the future already. Yeah, I mean, the best-case scenario you can get is look at the Cowboys. I mean, they they they've been kind of that mediocre eight and eight, nine and seven. You know, maybe they max out at ten and six. Uh, for a while, Tony Romo goes down. They drop to I think they were four and twelve last year. They get you know Ezekiel Elliott. Um, then they get Jalen Smith. Right? Remember, if he's good, that that draft cast will go yeah. down as maybe the best in NFL yeah. history. And then they luck out at Dak Prescott. So if the Jets can get something like that, obviously they're not going to get something as good as that. But you know, tanking occasionally does work. So I'm, I I won't be cheering against the Jets but I won't be upset if they lose. And this game reminds me a lot of the uh, 2014 Miami Dolphins-Jets uh, Monday Night Football game, which I barely, I watched, I think, the second half, and I, I just, I, like, you don't even, you get excited for big plays, but in the end of the day, you're not that mad when they lose. Um, anyways, yeah. Marcus, good stuff as always. Uh, we, we look forward to, to hearing from you uh, again. And, and I'm telling you, if the Jets, if, once this season is over, the Jet take will return to, to its happy forms. For, for right now, it's just going to be the most depressing show on, on, on the air for the next five weeks. Yeah. No, you guys are cool, man. Thanks for having me on your show. Um, you all have a good one. Happy holidays. Hey, you too, man. All right, that was Marcus, and we're going to get to our last caller of the night. This is Gang Green, David. Um, David, it's been a while. How are you doing, man? Mr. Ben, Mr. Kyle, how are you guys doing tonight? Yeah, we're doing good, David. I'm bummed we we didn't get to meet up. Uh, we we had a little, you know, we we the, the, we were yeah, in different sections, and I, I you know, I, I avoided I, David. I was staying away. I don't apologize. No, 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 it was the other way around, David. Oh, David okay. could have avoided you. And I wanted to apologize for that. I was in a bit of a hurry, so it sucks that we couldn't meet up. And it was just hectic for me to get there and back in one piece. But, you know, I hope we get to meet up again, though. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I think uh, if I do end up going to the college on, uh, going to college on the East Coast, um, then maybe we can uh, – uh, then maybe I'll go to some more Jets games and we can meet up. Uh, I mean, the best time, though, to meet up would have been after the game, go to the player lot, just, just watch them come out because there, there wasn't, there were that many people there. That would have been the best uh, time to meet up, David. But you know, it, it's all good, man. Um, but being in the same stadium, you were there. What were your thoughts on the energy and the vibe at MetLife uh, Stadium on Sunday night? Uh, it was kind of, it was just erratic because there were Patriot fans everywhere, and Patriot fans were louder than Jeff fans on Patriot big plays. You know, it, it was just so sad that the atmosphere turned into pretty much. Gillette Stadium, it, it sucked, and this is pretty much the first game that I've been around, like, what was it, 40,000 New England fans? Yeah, it, it was something crazy. Um, I mean, it didn't feel that bad, it was really just the noise that was that was different. I mean, if there were definitely way more Jets fans there. Uh, you know, you saw you saw your fair amount of red jerseys and, and so on, um, but for the most it part, it was it was just like, when the Jets would get a big player, or when Ryan Fitzpatrick, was, or when Tom Brady was on offense, um, there was no noise. But when you know Ryan Fitzpatrick was on offense, I think every single Patriot fan in that stadium was screaming. It was just that there's a big difference in, in just I don't know what the, if it's type of fan, but what it really is is it, when it comes down to is if your team's competitive, your your fans are gonna be loud. When they're not, it's gonna be a different atmosphere. Yeah, I Kyle hope. Types, it, it hope Kyle is like typing next year. go. Kyle, Kyle's writing go Patriots. So Kyle's officially joined the bandwagon of the New York. Oh, God. Oh, I need to get that soundbite ready. 
Anyways, David, uh, let's talk a little bit about... You want a soundbite? I'll give you a soundbite. All right, hold on. Let me, yeah. This this is so anticlimactic, it's unbelievable. No, dude, give me that, uh... Give me some James Bond, like, about the climax. I'm watching Kyle scream right now, and he... (laughs) That was loud. And, and he's <laughs> muted. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm still sharing screen. That's why it won't let me do it. So, yeah. Okay. Anyways, we're going we're gonna to mute David. I don't, I don't know yeah, we're going to mute David. Um, That's David, not for the no, best no, un- anyway. Un- unmute David. Hold on. We're unmuting David. David, why? what were your thoughts on, on, on Darrell Revis? And, and, you know, the report is coming out as we're doing this episode that he, you know, a close friend of him has said, you know, he, he just, he wants, he doesn't want to play anymore. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? That goes for Did Kyle hours. find his soundbite? Yeah, yeah, Kyle finally found a soundbite. <laughs> ah, well, listen, Darrell Reeves is old. You know, he's lost his mojo. He's been getting beat and burnt all year. You know, we haven't really seen that Darrell Reeves we all love so much anymore. And he even admitted himself he's old. It's time for him to go. And it's time for him to go into the Hall of Fame where he belongs. Oh, wow. I am... Disgusted. You better talk to him before I do, because I'm already... Oh, okay, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, give give your thoughts. What? What? What, what was that? I don't know. It was some, it was some horrible soundbite Kyle likes to play. Kyle... It's the oh. I am disgusted soundbite. It's when there's a terrible take, I, I play it. <laughs> Is he going to play Um, Revis will probably get into the Hall of Fame. I don't think these past two years have helped, but yeah, he needs to go. Simple as that. Okay, well, well let's move He's on like to the next disease. topic. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's not compare Darrell Revis to a disease because he did give this franchise, you know, six or so years of, of greatness. Now, David, let's talk about some of the bright spots. Let, let's let's bright, brighten up this episode for the last, you know, 15 minutes or so. Darren Lee, I thought he had a very good uh, game on Sunday. I know he missed the fourth down tackle or whatever, but, I mean, he led the, the, the team in tackles. And honestly, if he didn't get hurt um, in the middle of the season, he probably would have he would probably lead this team in tackles in the season. What are your thoughts on Darren Lee? You see, this is the point I've made all offseason. This is why I wanted Darren Lee to start. He's a young, quick, Hold good on. linebacker. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. I had to mute David there because I know where he's going with this. He's only going to do this because, you know, he never wanted Aaron Henderson to be the starter because he thought he was a liability. And then Aaron Henderson vanishes like some kid on the back of a milk carton, and now he's going to come out here and gloat. All right? So I'm just going to explain that for future. All right. Now you can go ahead oh, and your I'm not going to gloat. I'm just going to say – that I had my point proven. I never said I did not want Aaron Henderson to start. I wanted Darren Lee to get a shot at that starting job, and look where it got him. He's he leading the team in training camp. got a shot in training camp, and Aaron Henderson beat him out. He's a young. Oh. Aaron Henderson is a more experienced player, and if he wasn't on some bullcrap list that the NFL has for people who, you know, did something they don't really want to find out about, you know, he'd be starting. Does, does anybody have any idea what happened to Aaron Henderson? The dude's just uh, gone. No, nope. I'm gonna guess it was it was something like a drug addiction or overdose or something like that. I would assume so. <laughs> Jesus, that's like the an overdose. Wait, no, you think I'm, be, I'm you being think serious. You think he pulled like a Heath Ledger or something? No, no, no. I don't think he didn't die. I'm just saying he the, there is something that went on. The NFL is is gonna keep it private because it, it's not something. It, it, I'm telling you it's something related to drugs or alcohol or something like that. If it was like a domestic violence thing, you would know about it. But if it's something like a drug or overdose, it, it's one of those things where I think the NFL respects uh, almost like a, you know, a doctor confidentiality that they're going to say Aaron Henderson won't play for the rest of the year. He might not ever play again, um, but he's dealing with his own things right now. Uh, and that's basically what Todd Bowles said. Um, now, moving on from Aaron Henderson, let's talk about this offensive line, who you know somehow it was our biggest worry coming into the year. Um, and it's our actually, best unit. It, it, not our best unit, but it's, well, it's, it's definitely it's definitely up there. The Jets have done a good job just you know putting together just a patchwork offensive line with Ben Ijelana, James Carpenter, Nick Mangle, Brian Winters, uh, and Bruno Giacomini. 
And they formed. Nino Giacomini has been doing pretty decent this year. I've never thought I'd see this in my life. I I saw him exactly. after the game. I saw him after and the game. And you said you saw him. I, he could have got yeah. the autograph, and you said no. Nah. No, no, I saw he walked right past me. He's a huge guy, and I was like, oh, I could ask him for his autograph. And I was like, uh, uh, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and I just kept walking. And I, uh, <laughs> well, because I saw Fitzpatrick. I saw Fitzpatrick through the window. And I was like, um, so I stopped him my time. I'm stopping that. Oh, that's been... I, I, I stopped that immediately. Uh, I saw Breno, and I was like, oh, I could go ask him. And I was like, oh, there's Fitzpatrick. I was like, oh, I'll choose the worst of the two players. And I went with Fitzpatrick. Uh, and I, uh, Fitzpatrick gave me a nice smile and a wave, but he didn't want to sign anything. Um, because I mean, he, was, he was clearly upset about it. But he was holding his kids and stuff. That's when you realize just these guys are... I mean, they're, 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 they're human kids. beings that yeah, we... That some I mean, of us have definitely. Watch, watching him play with his daughter in the lobby and stuff and talk, I think he was talking to some family members and stuff, and it was just like, it was like you realize, like, you, you trash on this guy and all types of other guys, but it's like, they do they have, have a family. family. They, yeah, I mean, they're playing a game. Um, but, you I know, I feel and, bad and for their kids. That, wait, on that note, hold on, I, I will get there in a second. On that note, huge, huge, huge shout out to Sheldon Richardson, who stayed, I think, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. After the game, uh, or after you know he he left his little room, so just he was just in the parking lot for almost 20 minutes signing autographs for for kids and fans and, and taking photos. And- I didn't mean to do that. What was that? It was Alex's theme song. Um, and it was it was I gotta say that's I mean that's what sports is about. You know, he he realized that these guys paid you know good money to go watch this team, and you know I, I know he was distraught about the the. the the loss, but I mean, he was still able to, to put on a smile, and it was funny. We joked about um, uh, we were talking. I mean, he does sign his signature with a with an uh, a cash sign. A money symbol. Was, oh yeah, yeah, no! And everybody, and everybody was just, like, what's going on with your sound bites, buddy? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut off David for a little bit. Oh, right, what's David doing? Um, but I have to say, I mean, he 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 really. Uh, we were talking about it, and we we're like, oh, I was like, uh, you looking forward to that big money contract you're gonna make next year? <laughs> and he just laughed and smiled, and, and a couple other Jets fans, we all said, uh, we think he's gonna make over two hundred million. Uh, in oh, the next deal. So. nice. Uh, <laughs> we're really inflating you... his head with with uh, big numbers. Yeah, so you're please, welcome, Jets please, Nation. Yeah, please don't. I was about to say, please don't boost his ego. I mean. But man, cool. I have to ask you a question. Would you classify right. Would you classify Sheldon Richardson as the man for signing those autographs? You're You're about to play Alex's theme song, so please don't. No, I'm not. I, I class- yes, I, I would, would classify you? him as the man. I would also I also want to give a special shout out to Mark <laughs> uh, Mark Gastineau. Um, he was sitting in the the uh, suite next to ours. Uh, and I have to say, he... he That's he, how you know Ben's rich. He's sitting next no, to Mark Gaston no, now. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It's, ben, tell everybody how much you spent on those sweets. Okay, 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 Kyle. That that was unnecessary. No, Mark Gaston turned... Uh, and and he saw the the people were booing. I think it was I think it was after Robbie Anderson's fumble. And he started he started screaming J E T S Jets Jets Jets. And he actually got a little J E T S Jets 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 chance going um, in our in our little section. It was actually probably the only time you could hear the chant the entire game. And he was screaming, "These guys don't need you booing at them. Uh, you got to be cheering them." Um, you know, he said some other stuff. So he, I mean, I cheer a fumble? Stuff. No, no, no. He said you, they need your support out there. Um, so don't be booing your own team and stuff. And he was saying, you know, uh, just everybody rally together, get loud and stuff. And I gotta, gotta well, I gotta give him credit. He was, he was going all out for the New York Jets. Um, so, so big shout out to him. Anyways, well, look, well, hold on. Mark, Mark Gaston needs to stop worrying about, you know, the fans, and he needs to start worrying about the person who keeps dyeing his hair because it's terrible. Have you seen that dude's hair? I, I saw it in person. I took a photo. It looks, it looks terrible. It is horrendous. It looks like somebody shaved the poodle, straightened it, don't, straightened don't, its hair, don't, don't, don't and then glued it to his head. I'm going to trash on him. I'm going to trash on him right now. What if, you, what if you wanted to come on the show, Kyle? Would you say that to the big 6'5", you know, 280-pound man that he is? In person or over the phone? Uh, either one. Over the phone, yes. In person, probably no. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be honest. Well, he is like 70, isn't he? I mean, I think I could outrun him. I don't think you could outrun, like, a snail. It's just not true. true. I don't know where right, you David, get this David, assumption. David, 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 David. Um, a couple more questions for you, buddy. Let's talk about Whoa, the offense. what was that? What? The buddy? Just, 
Nobody else just heard, like, this weird glitching thing? Kyle, it's just because you live in Florida. Um, David, let's talk about this You live in rural Oregon in literally a mountain. Rural Oregon? Well, I live in Portland. That's the you city. Live, you live, like, 40 minutes away from Oregon in, like, the middle of some forest. I live 40 minutes away from Oregon when I live in Oregon. Kyle, that makes sense. Florida oh, wow. Education I'm, Board. I'm st- Florida Education is better than Oregon's education by, like, yeah, a okay, lot. for sure. Yeah, it is. I mean, we're like 15th in the nation. You guys are like 27th. Alabama's literally ranked ahead. We're not, we're not talking about, but whatever. Um, yeah, you go I mean, to a private school that uh, okay. no, I'm not no, going to go that. into, not but that. you know, your, was, your dad oh pays my, for it. Kyle, I might have to cut this out. You, you're, you know, you're painting a big picture of me here. David's been quiet for a while. Let's talk about the Jets, Because I muted him. You muted David? No. Our own call. Oh, there he is. I unmuted him. I unmuted him. Um, David, let's talk about this this Austin Safarian Jenkins, who, who uh, that's been <laughs> who? one of my main yeah I mean who? he was a he was an actual threat in Tampa Bay one maybe their second best target uh, and since coming to New York I mean he's been non-existent why why do you think Austin Safarian Jenkins has been virtually non-existent because tight ends don't exist because we don't use our tight ends properly that's something that Chain Gailey does not no, know no, how I, to do I, I mean it, it's I mean, not like, even properly like, it's like, at all whoever the huge uh, the guy with the the blonde hair Tomlinson uh, Bostick those guys are all getting in Austin Severin Jenkins gets in once and he bobbled his catch but he caught it it just it doesn't make any sense to me why, why he's not out there I guess it just means Gailey just values the blocking tight ends way more than a guy like Austin Severin Jenkins but then why even sign him it, just, it just doesn't make much sense to me it makes sense. You know we have good running backs. We need good blockings to make sure they have a lean. So I guess we just use them for blockers and really for pass catchers. All right, David. Last question for you. Uh, actually, second to last question. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a list of veterans, and you're going to tell me out of the these ones, who are the ones that you want to see return? Okay. So All of them. Just say, just say return or uh, return, restructure, trade, or cut. Okay. He's not going to remember. Go. Matt Forte. Return. Okay. David Harris. Um, that's a tough one. He, I would, I would hope to say return. He is a beast, he's but you have seven million though. I, okay. Restructure. Yeah, maybe restructure. Um, Ryan Clady. Ba, ba, ba. I would probably the restructure cut. Okay, uh, Darrell Revis. Hi. <laughs> Marcus Gilchrist. Return. Brandon Marshall. Return. Nick Mangold. Restructure. Eric Decker. Return. And hold on, let me, let me think of the other ones. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, oh, I thought you had like a list going. That was, it was pretty good. Oh, that was coming off the top of my head. I know, I know. Yeah, I was, that was, I was that making was good. sure. Uh, there, there's somebody I'm forgetting. So hold on. There's somebody I am forgetting. Oh, um, Buster Screen. Buster Screen. Buster, Buster Screen. Buster Screen. Uh, between return or restructure? Wow. Okay. And with that, yeah, no, I agree with every that. ounce of accountability that, uh, that David has ever acquired. Okay, Kyle. Anyways, David, uh, last question, man. Who's winning Monday night and why? Well, listen, Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton, they may be injured, but they're going to come back strong. You know, T.Y. Hilton is one of the biggest deep threats in the league, and Andrew Luck's going to read Darrell Revis a lot more. You know, it's going to be a close one, but I think Indy's probably going to end up upsetting us on Monday Night Football with the final score of 24 to 20. I don't think that's an upset. upset no I think the Colts are like minus four and a half. Let me go check the line right now. I don't think it's an upset at all. As you hear me slamming away on my keyboard. Yeah, so we we hear you. We hear you, Kyle. You can always hear me. I mean, that's always yeah, the well, scenario. Well, anyways, the Colts have the way better record. The Jets are definitely the upset. But I agree with that. All right, guys. Uh, David, uh, good stuff as always from you, man. Give out your information. You have a great YouTube channel. You uh, you, you film some of the games. Uh, you have season tickets. Sorry about that. That was a, that was a bad purchase. <laughs> hey. um, yeah, sorry about that, bro. So just give out all of your information, man. Your Twitter and stuff. Uh, so you could check out my um, you could check out my YouTube channel. Um, I vlog about the Jets. I go to games. Um, you know, I hope to finally meet up with fans. You know, this season's just been a total bust. 
you know, I was looking into the season thinking we were going to see a competitive football team, maybe even 12-4. and four, but it's, Yeah, playoffs, I thought we were going to maybe even go on a legitimate run, go to the Super Bowl, but boy, was I wrong. But, you know, I, uh, in regards to that, I love doing my YouTube channel, and um, I love entertaining you guys. Um, you can follow me on you, on Twitter at GangmanDavid1. You can follow me on Instagram at Gangman underscore David. Comment, like, rate, subscribe. And I'm going to keep doing these videos. I hope you guys can continue to like it and support it. David, good stuff as always, man. We look forward to hearing from you next week. Uh, yep, looking forward to it. I see you, David. Good night. That was Gangrene David. Uh, we will make sure to tweet out his stuff. Um, good stuff from our callers tonight. Uh, we, we appreciate uh, still calling in even though this team sucks. Yeah. Um, it's it's difficult. I mean, you, you, we have the highest uptick um, of callers during the off season because that's when the Jets are always positive. Yeah. But right that's now, when we I mean, can, that's when we can spin things without any evidence going against it. Really. <laughs> Uh, oh, right. I think if I think about the Colts game, they are minus two, so they're two point favorites, which very strange line. I don't think I've ever seen that in my life. I've seen one and a half, seen three, two. It's very strange. Uh, the projected total is forty nine points. Uh, that's the third highest in the NFL this week. So if they're uh, if yeah, if they only think the Colts are going to win by like two points or at least keep it within a touchdown, it's usually what that means tells me that they think the Jets are going to put up 21. Personally, I think the Jets win this game, honestly. You take Andrew Luck, who's not healthy. He has a concussion and he has other issues. Uh, they are terrible. If Andrew so, Luck was... So, Kyle, so Kyle give, me, give me some advice here. I have a friend who is a, a diehard Colts fan, and he wants to put together a bet. Um, if the Colts win, I have to wear his Andrew Luck jersey, and if the Jets win, he has to wear my Darrell Revis jersey. Should I do it or not? Because the only reason I wouldn't is because part of me wants to cheer for the Colts. But um, but do you think the Jets are winning, and should I put my Darrell Revis jersey on the line? Or my at least my pride with the Andrew Luck jersey on the line? Uh, yeah, I probably would. I honestly think the Jets win this game pretty easily. You look at this team, and I, I really don't like pro football focus uh, for various reasons, but... You look at this defensive line of the Colts, they're like all under 50 ratings. Same goes with their linebackers, and only like two of their corners are over 60. Their defense is horrendous. Their offensive line's not much better. Uh, Frank Gore is old and slow. Uh, tight end Dwayne Allen has not been a factor this year. Dante Moncrief, their number two, inconsistent. It's really only been T.Y. Hilton and Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck's coming off the concussion, and, you know, they say he's going to play, but how healthy is he? And T.Y. Hilton, double team him, you really take him away. I think the Jets win this game pretty easily, especially if Ryan Fitzpatrick comes out and plays like he did. Now, if that's a good thing, I don't know. I just feel like this is one of those games that the Jets are going to win. The Colts have not improved since last year. Uh... In fact, they've digressed a lot. And I, I could say regressed? the same about a digress. Yeah, I think it's regress, but okay. I think both of them work, actually, thinking about it. But, um, yeah, I just think the Jets win. And I, the line tells it all. I mean, honestly, you look at this game right now, Ben. Colts, you know, I believe they're over 500. Jets suck. Who, who should be the huge favorite in that game? It's a regress. I looked it up. Digress means like um, deviate or go off on a tangent, get off on the subject. Like I digress. Oh, okay. It's regress. Yeah. My bad. My I, I am the grammar Nazi, so it's it's all good. Yeah. I, I am that guy in the YouTube comment section that is changing you're at your least yours one of those. to your yours and your theirs to your theirs. Anyways, guys, I think that's gonna do it for the. Oh, most... whoa, whoa, hold up. Hold oh, up. Whoa, whoa, you Kyle, Kyle has one more thing to say. No, we can't. we still gotta do predictions. Oh my gosh! Well, I forgot that we didn't do it last week because I was yeah, on a plane. No. I was yeah. on a plane while you're doing the episode, so we did not upload an episode. Um, so let's go to the NFL um, schedule. There we go, NFL. Here we go. So let's 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 go grade how we did on a couple weeks ago. Let's go. To yeah, we last. have 15 minutes. We're good. We can do yeah, this. Yeah, we, we might end a little early today, but uh, let's let's look at this. So week 12. Uh, what do we ask? What do we predict? Do we predict um, week 12 or anything? Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to find our uh, 
all notes, Gmail, weekly picks. So I am sitting at 16, 8, and 2. Or no, sorry, excuse me. I'm sitting at uh, 23, 14, and 2. Um, and I have, we have yet to grade week 11. So let's go grade week 11 for me. Um, I got Panthers correct, Cardinals wrong, so I'm 1 and 1. Uh, Giants um, correct, so I'm 2 and 1. Buccaneers uh, wrong, uh, Lions and Jaguars right. Um, Kyle, wait, Kyle, can you keep track of this while I read this out? Can you keep track of like 3 and 2, 2 and 3? Where are you at currently? Uh, I'll, I'll do it again. All right, Panthers, okay. Saints. I guess Panthers, 1 and 0. So, so just say 1 and 0, okay? Okay. Cardinals, Vikings, I was right, or I was wrong. One and so one. one. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Giants and Bears, I was right. Two and one. Gi- uh, Chiefs and Bucks, I was wrong. Two and two. Lions and Jaguars, I was right. Wait, all, weren't all these games last week? No, these were two weeks ago. Lions uh, played the Vikings last week. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so we were at two and two. Uh no, 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 no. I beat three and two. All right, three and two. Oh, my God, you're bad at this. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It has uh, to be in paper. In Dolphins, Rams, I was wrong. Really? Three and three. Yeah, I guess, I guess Rams, the Dolphins won. Wow. Um, Bills and Bengals, I was right. Four and three. Steelers and Browns, I was right. Five and three. Cowboys and Ravens, I was right. Six and three. Colts and Titans, I was right. Seven and three. Pats and 49ers, I was right. Eight and three. Redskins and Packers, I was right. Nine and three. And Raiders and Texans, I was right. Ten and three. Looks very strong showing from me. All right, Kyle, let's go great jurors. You are currently sitting. Oh, wait, and let's, let's add mine up. Hold on. So I, I went, uh, what was I at? I was at Ten and 20, three. 17 and two. Oh, no, wait, sorry. That was, that was you. I was at 23, 14 and two. So 23 plus 10, 33, 14 plus 3 is 17. So I went 33, 17, and 2 is my is my overall um, record. Kyle, let's go do you. Um, all right. You were right. 1 and 0. Wrong. 1 and 1. Right. 2 and 1. Wrong. 2 and 2. Right. 3 and 2. Right. 4 and 2. Right. Five and two. Right. Six and two. Right. Seven and two. Right. Eight and two. Wrong. You picked the Titans over the Colts, so wrong. Eight and three. Right. Nine and three. Wrong. Nine and four. And right. Ten and four. So you went ten and four, and I went... um. Where did I go? I went ten and three. You went. How did that? How, whoa, whoa. how did I go twenty and three? You went ten and four. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just doing that in my head. I'm like, hold up. Wait I a have four. Did I did I not guess the Eagles and Seahawks game? So I think I went eleven and three. Oh yeah, I did not count it. I don't think I counted the because it was down. Okay, it was below the Raiders and I didn't see that. My bad. And the Seahawks beat the Eagles. So there we go. Northwest pride. Um, so that puts me at yeah. eleven and three, and you at ten and four. That makes more sense. Um, so that puts you at ten and four. So let's add uh, twenty plus ten is thirty. Seventeen plus four is twenty-one. So thirty and twenty-one gives you. So you are thirty, twenty-one, and two all time, and I am um, thirty-three, seventeen, and two. So I think Ben is is on the better track. So that means, Kyle, uh, to wrap up this very uh, the snooze fest of an episode, we've got to do our final predictions. Wait, 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 wait. You're 33, 17, and 2? Yeah, but remember, we've skipped weeks and stuff. Okay, so that means I've picked one more game than you. 33, 17, and 2. Mm-hmm. Oh, and did I not add it up? Did I not add the Seahawks game in the total score? Yeah, never mind. Thirty-four, seventeen, two. Like I added it to my eleven and three record, but I didn't add it up. I feel like I need to see these. Dude, I will send them to you. Look, cause I look, I know exactly what I did. I just changed it because I was sitting. Remember, I was sitting at ten and three, and I said, "Oh, I didn't call the, I didn't write the Seahawks because it was right below the Raiders, which is where it ends on this sheet, and the Seahawks is above the Raiders." 
So I just scrolled down to yours. So I changed it to 11 and 3, but I never changed my overall. Okay. So I'm 34, 17 and 2, and you are 30, 21 and 2. Okay. Kyle, Kyle's writing 30. Okay. I don't know what Kyle's writing. All right. Kyle, let's do these games. And I, they, I'm on the record so people can go back and check the episode um, if they're curious, just like you, Kyle. Full time to do week 13. So we skipped a few weeks here and there. All right. Cowboys and Vikings. I'm going to take my Cowboys. Lions and Saints give me the what is that? Is it in New Orleans? Give me the Saints. Uh, Broncos and Jaguars, Broncos. Texans and Packers, Packers. Dolphins and Ravens, Dolphins. Uh, Bills and Raiders, give me the Raiders. Giants and Steelers. Uh, in Heinz Field, give me the Steelers. Um, Panthers and Seahawks, give me the Seahawks. Colts and Jets, give me the... Uh, God, I'm torn here. Give me the Jets. Um, Rams and Patriots, give me the Pats. 49ers and Bears, give me the 49ers. Chiefs and Falcons, give me the Falcons. Bengals and Eagles, give me the Eagles. Bucks and Chargers, give me the Bucks. And Redskins and Cardinals, give me the Redskins. A little shocker there in Arizona. All right, Kyle? How is that a shocker in any way? Um, because, I don't know, the, the Cardinals are probably be favored to win. No, I doubt it. They suck. All right, well, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me. We'll get to yours in a second. Where's, where's it say Kyle? Hold on, I'm trying to look for you. Not oh, okay. So I, I just, oh my gosh, I accidentally put you in my mix. Okay, I put you in the middle of mine. So hold on, let me, let me copy and paste that out. Cut that paste down, and then we can cut. So I write all my essays off of Wikipedia. Just copy okay, and paste. Okay, Kyle. Okay, Kyle. You're, you're a great person. Paste. All right, Kyle, your picks uh, for week 13. I'll read out the game. You give me the name. Or you give me who you think is going to win. Uh, Cowboys oh, and Vikings in Minnesota. Cowboys. Uh, Saints and Lions in New Orleans. Saints. Remember, you have to catch up some games, so you might want to mix up the I'm going to pick who I think wins, Ben, so you don't worry about the record. we still got a lot of weeks. All right, Broncos and Jaguars in uh, Jacksonville. Broncos. Uh, Texans and Packers in Green Bay. God, Brock Osweiler sucks. Packers. Dolphins and Ravens in Baltimore. Hmm. Streak ends. Ravens. Ooh, I'd already typed Dolphins. That's kind of inconvenient. Um, Bills and Raiders in Oakland. Wow. Sammy Watkins going to play. Do we know that? Uh, he should play. He's practicing fully. Give really me the bills. milking this one, Kyle. Give me the Bills. Wow. you That's the second time I wrote Raiders and you took Bills. Okay. Giants and Steelers? Steelers. Um, Panthers and Seahawks? Seahawks. I, I'm thinking about going Panthers there, but no, I think Seahawks are better. Colts and Jets? Jets. Um, Rams and Patriots? Pats. Uh, 49ers and Bears. <laughs> God. It's a battle of how much can I suck over the past 20 years. Um, <sighs> Jesus. This is really hard to pick. In Chicago? Yeah. Who did you pick? I picked the Niners. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling the same thing. 
I'll go with them. Wow, you suck. Um, Chiefs and Falcons in Atlanta. Give me Arrowhead. It's in Atlanta. Give me Arrowhead. Okay, you're saying the Chiefs. Okay, I, I, I didn't know if you're confused. Um, Eagles and Bengals in Cincinnati. The Bengals suck, but so does Carson Wentz on the road. Give me the Bengals. Okay. Buccaneers at Chargers. Bucks are just a better team. And our last game, Redskins at Cardinals. Redskins. So that that does it for our weekly picks. Um, thank you to all our listeners. Uh, we we promise we we're gonna be happy again. We promise. We just gotta get through this dreadful season. Uh, I can't thank you all. See that. <laughs> thank you to all our listeners. A reminder: We are at the Jet Take on Twitter. You can follow us there. We have a blog page. We're all over the place: Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, obviously um, iTunes, SoundCloud, basically everywhere. Your cell phone. Okay. Um, but thank you to all our listeners. Uh, we appreciate all the love and support. Uh, and we will talk to you guys next week. But first, we have to end it like we end every single episode with the greatest chant in the National Football League that nobody does anymore. That yeah, that, that is officially dying out. We will talk to you guys next Wednesday. <laughs> Kyle, over under ten people at MetLife Stadium on Monday. Oh, what am I betting on this? What am I gonna risk? Um, one penny. Ooh, I go over. Damn. Yeah.